Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another fantastic episode of this podcast called The Dictionary. I hope that you uh, know what you clicked on, because more than likely you are the one who turned this episode on, so you should know what you're listening to. I am Spencer, and I will be your host for today. Um, This day that this episode is airing, you are probably not listening to it on this day, but for the rest of you, 50 people maybe, uh, this is airing on Halloween Eve. Not Halloween yet, Halloween Eve. And I just noticed the date, so I thought I would just say that. It's not as interesting as Halloween. I don't know, it doesn't really change anything, but maybe I should remember to do something spooky in tomorrow's episode, because... Because why not? Okay, the first word in this episode, this Halloween Eve episode, is deprecate. D-E-P-R-E-C-A-T-E. This one is a, a transitive verb. Just trying to make sure it's not also intransitive. Transitive verb from 1628. Number 1A is archaic to pray against and the thing that you might be praying against is evil or an evil evil to pray against an evil is deprecate 1b does not say that this one is also archaic this one is to seek to avert to seek to avert, as in, deprecate the wrath of the Roman people. And that is a quote from Tobias Smollett. Smollett? Smollett. Uh, To seek to avert. So you're trying to avert the wrath or something from something. Deprecate. Hmm. The etymology, let's, I'm interested to see what this says. Number two, to express disapproval of. I don't think I disapprove of that thing, so I'm going to deprecate it. 3A. My examples are so much better than the examples in the book. That was a joke. 3A. This synonym is play down. But then there's also a, li- a short little definition which says make a little of. So play down is the synonym make little of, as in speaks five languages, but deprecates this facility. And that is a quote from Time. So, okay, so if you speak five languages, but you're like, nah, you you, you play it down. You're like, no, it's I'm not that fancy. I'm not that special. I'm not that talented. I'm not that great. I'm going to make little of the fact that I can speak five languages. That's deprecating. Deprecating yourself in that situation. I can definitely not speak five languages. Clearly, I can barely speak this one language. 3B. The synonyms are belittle and disparage, as in the most reluctantly admired and least easily deprecated of novelists. (laughs) That was a weird sentence. The most reluctantly admired and least easily deprecated of novelists. The New Yorker said that. They were talking about somebody? A novelist, probably? So this novelist is reluctantly admired, not very admired, and least easily deprecated. So does that mean that you can't deprecate them? You can't belittle or disparage them not very easily? Does that mean that they're very talented? And it's, oh, I don't know. It's a very complicated sentence. Um, yeah, that's that's a, that was a fun example. Deprecatingly is an adverb, and deprecation is a noun. So where is this from? It is from the Latin verb. I think this is a verb deprecari, which means to avert by prayer. So if you pray for something, you're going to avert something away when you deprecate. That is from day plus precari, which means to pray. And there's more of the word pray. So it's all about praying. Hmm. How did it become this thing of 
play down, make little of, belittle, disparage. I, I can't really think about how that's connected to praying exactly or averting by prayer. I guess, I guess, so instead of avert by prayer, you're sort of averting just by words, like you're averting the praise. If you're the one who can speak five languages, but you deprecate your ability in that, you are, you're, uh, you're averting the praise. Ooh, interesting. Okay, maybe, maybe that's what it is. All right, I got to do a sound effect. And uh, I guess because uh, it's Halloween Eve, we got to, should probably do something like that, right? Like maybe, <laughs> dumb. Next word, deprecatory. Deprecatory or deprecatory. Either one of those is fine. Adjective from 1586, one. Seeking to avert disapproval. And the synonym is apologetic. So seeking to avert disapproval. So if something, something is going to disapprove of you, but you want to avert it, you are being deprecatory. Number two, serving to deprecate. And the synonym is disapproving. Deprecatorily is an adverb. Deprecatorily. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's all about just, it's like, it's like moving a thing away, get away. I don't know. That's not a great example. Next word. Ooh. Depreciate. Verb. From the 15th century. One. To lower in estimation or esteem. You're lowering the, the quality of a thing that's esteem. You're bringing it down a notch. 2A. To lower the price or estimated value of, as in, depreciate property. We, we see a lot of that. It's uh, up, ups and downs. Depreciate. What's the opposite of depreciate? Is it just appreciate? Or appreciate? It's probably appreciate. To be, to deduct from taxable income a portion of the original cost of. <laughs> oh God, that's not the end of the sentence. There's parentheses and then there's more. Okay, so let's read, read it without the parentheses. To deduct from taxable income a portion of the original cost of over, over several years as the value of the asset decreases. And the example of the thing is a business asset. So, God, why do these have to be so worded weird? To deduct from taxable income a portion of the original cost. So you're, from the original cost, you're deducting taxable income over several years as the value of the asset decreases. So as the value of a business asset decreases, you are deducting taxable income from a portion of the original cost of the thing. Blah, my brain just shuts down here. Um, that's yeah, fine. It's, it's the same idea. It's the, the value is going down, basically. Okay, those were transitive. Here's intransitive. Just one to fall in value. I hope, I hope the value of this podcast is not depreciating. For most of you, the value is is just uh, is just zero dollars. No, it's it's short. It doesn't cost you any money, and so hopefully it just stays the same. If you were paying for this, if you went to Patreon and then you thought it got lower in quality then maybe it would be depreciating, but hopefully it's at least staying the same. That's what we want. Just status quo. I do hope to make this better, though, as I have more time, maybe someday, hopefully. A synonym is decry, D-E-C-R-Y. Depreciable is an adjective. It can be depreciated. Depreciatingly is an adverb. Depreciation is a noun. Wow, there's a lot of these words. Depreciative is an adjective. Depreciator is a noun. And depreciatory is an adjective. Let's see. This is from Latin depreciare. 
de pretiare, which is from de plus pretium, which means price. And there's more at the word price. So yeah, that's very clear. The price, you put the de in front of it, the price goes down. Depreciate. Ooh. Next word is depredate. D-E-P-R-E-D-A-T-E. -E -E. Depredate. Verb. From 1626, starting with transitive, to lay waste. And the synonyms are plunder and ravage. Anytime I see the word plunder, I think of pirates. Depredate. Intransitive says to engage in plunder. Depredation is a noun. Depredator or depredator. Is that the word? Mm, that makes sense. Depredator or depredator. That is also a noun. De depredatory or depredatory. <laughs> That's an adjective. Depredatory. That's a weird word to say. Depredatory. So the word predator predate predate predator is in here so yeah i mean if you're plundering or ravaging you are a predator that's pretty obvious um let's see okay so this is from the latin depridari depridari maybe that's how they say it that is from day plus pridari which means to plunder and there's more at the word prey p-r-e-y and that's especially interesting because, yeah, we as we said, predator is in the word. Uh, well, not exactly, but another form of the word. And then the prey, the prey is the prey of the predator. And I still need to see that movie, Prey. I've heard it's pretty good. Ooh. I don't know. This is some sort of ghosty, creepy sound is what it is. The next word is... Deprenil, D-E-P-R-E-N-Y-L, Deprenil, noun from 1975, a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, C13, H17N, used especially to treat Parkinson's disease. And of course, the name just comes from, you know, it, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, it's fine. D uh, the D-I is from dimethyl. The PR, the, the PR is from propionic acid. The EN is from phenyl. And the YL is from ethyl. Dimethyl propionic acid phenylethyl. Phenylethyl. Uh, yep. I, I assume that this they're still using this for Parkinson's disease, but it's been um, almost 50 years, so maybe they got something new. I don't know. Deprenil. Next word. Maybe I should put an effect on these to make them creepier. Next word. Depress or depress. This is a transitive verb from the 14th century. One is obsolete. Synonyms are repress. Repress, like repressing your emotions. And also subjugate. To A, to press down, as in, depress a typewriter key. We, uh, we just stayed at an Airbnb, and they had an older typewriter, and I clicked the keys, so I was depressing the typewriter keys. Press, just press it down. That's, that's a depress, a depression. Depression is also something else, which we will talk about in tomorrow's episode. Uh, okay, to B, I think that's where we are, to cause to sink to a lower position. To cause to sink to a lower position. The key was up here, and now the key is down there. It has been depressed. Three, to lessen the activity or strength of, as in drugs that may depress the appetite. Maybe you have too much of an appetite. Maybe this is for somebody who uh, likes to eat a lot or they just don't fully, aren't fully conscious of when they're full. And so maybe it helps when they take a drug that's, that tells them that they're not hungry because they're probably not hungry. So it, uh, the, the, the appetite is depressed. Number four, synonyms are sadden, 
and discourage, as in, don't let the news depress you. Your emotion has been depressed. It has been pressed down just like the typewriter keys. That's kind of, that's what we're talking about here. Your, your happiness went from happy to sad. Number five, to decrease the market value or marketability of. Depress the markets. Depressible is an adjective. This is from the Latin, uh, yeah, the Latin depremere, which means to press down from day plus premere, which means to press, and there's more at the word press. So press. Now, how is this different? To press and to press down. Isn't isn't the word down sort of implied in the word press? How would you use those differently? Primere and de primere. I just, it's the same thing in my brain. <laughs> the next word is depressant with an A-N-T at the end. Noun from 1876, one that depresses specifically an agent that reduces a bodily functional activity or an instinctive desire, like appetite. So there are drugs called depressants. I don't know if they're going to make you sad, but at the very least, they're going to they're going to reduce the bodily functional activity of a thing. Typically, it is your appetite. I think more often than not, that's what it's telling me. I think that's uh, that's that's close enough. One more word for this episode, still in this same world of stuff. Depressed. D-E-P-R-E-S-S-E-D. Adjective from 1598. This is a very large topic. We've already hinted at it a bit in the last couple of words. And we're going to get more into it in in tomorrow, in the next episode. Uh, Depressed. Adjective from 1598. Number one. Low in spirits. The synonym is sad, especially affected by psychological depression. Yep, that's what it is. This is, uh, this is a thing. It's a big, big thing. 2A, vertically flattened, as in a depressed cactus. Now, I think we need to find a picture of a depressed, tac- <laughs> depressed cactus um because what is it is it has it literally been flattened or is it just one of those more short squat cactuses cacti um also i also just want to see a cactus that is sad and why are they sad because they they have a great life the cacti what to be having the central part lower than the margin It has been depressed because it's lower. It's been pressed down. 2C, line, flat, or prostrate. So when I'm laying in bed, sleeping, I'm depressed. 2D, dorsoventrally flattened. (laughs) That's a fun word. Dorsoventrally. So the dorsal, I think, is like the, the back, the top of a thing, kind of. And then ventrally, that might be like a vertical thing. I'm not entirely sure. I hope we have the word dorsoventral in the D's later. Um, But it's been flattened. It's flat. Three, for depressed. Suffering from economic depression, especially the synonym underprivileged. There are sections of cities or whole cities or towns that don't get a lot of money for some reason or have lost a lot of money and so they can't really do a lot of things like education they can't educate their kids very well they can't maybe give people a lot of jobs uh, who need jobs they can't uh, maybe fix streets or things like that or buildings and so the area has been it's underprivileged it's depressed it's very sad number four being below the standard 
<laughs> this podcast is depressed because it is below the standard of all the other podcasts out there. Okay, so, um, luckily, I am not depressed right now. I have definitely been depressed in my life, and I think many, many adults have experienced this. Uh, obviously, some much worse than others. Um, yeah, I feel like maybe we'll talk about that more in the next episode, uh, because, uh, you know, yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing that we got to talk about. Um, yeah, okay. So, it's time. It's time for the word of the episode. It's time for the word of the episode. It's time for the word of the episode. We're going to pick a word of the episode. It's going to be a great word of the episode. Hopefully, it's easier than picking yesterday's word of the episode. Let's find out. Deprecate. Deprecatory or deprecatory. Depreciate. Depredate. Deprenil. Depress, depressant, and depressed. Let's see. I have to sort of remind myself about all of these words a little bit. Um, I'm just re-reading them. Depredate. Ooh, that's that's the predator one. Lane, waste, depronil, depress. Hmm. Okay, well, hmm. <laughs> I did think the first handful of words were kind of interesting, but I am going to pick... Deprenil, as the word of the episode, D-E-P-R-E-N-Y-L, uh, because it's a thing that helps uh, treat Parkinson's, which is really, really helpful for people who have Parkinson's. And um, it's uh, it's sort of different from all a lot of these other words, and I didn't know what else to pick, and I think it's a good thing in the world. So, if you've got Parkinson's, maybe you should get some Deprenil from your doctor. That's it. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Happy Halloween tomorrow. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Oh, that was a little terrible. Um, thank you very much for joining me. This episode is airing on Halloween. You are very likely not listening to this on Halloween, but I don't care. Uh, thank you to Tom Mislowski for that brand new creepy Halloween-y theme song for this episode. I very much appreciate him throwing that together in the, just a couple of days, really. Um, and so, yeah, go go check out Tom's stuff, all of his music. And I think he's got a radio show. And, uh, you know, you, you, you got to see him perform live. You got to be local to the Chicago area. But, you know, see what you can do. I don't know what I'm going to do to make this more of a Halloween episode, but I guess I'll just figure it out as I go. And some of these words are kind of similar to what we talked about at the end of the last episode, which is, um, it's uh, not always the happiest of subjects, but we do have to talk about it. I don't know if we can connect that to Halloween in any way. Probably not. But we just have to talk about the words. Oh, and just real quick, let's just do all the pluggy things like we do sometimes. Twitter, Instagram is at DictionaryPod. There is a Patreon, at Spijampar, which is the same username for my personal Twitter and Instagram if you want to go look at that stuff. Um, there's merchandising. The link is in the show notes. There's a Google Voice number that you can call and leave a voicemail. 9175... No... 9177275757 Um there's a Patreon if you want to give me just $1 a month you can get early episodes and uh that would make me very happy and that would make you very happy to get early episodes before anybody else in the world Uh email dictionarypod at gmail.com Okay let's talk about the words Let's talk about the words I'm not going to do that through the whole thing. The first word in this episode is depressing. And yes, it just, it is, it is depressing. It makes us all very sad. It is spelled D-E-P-R-E-S-S-I-N-G, adjective from 1629. The definition is just, that depresses. Well, that's depressing. Especially... Causing emotional depression, as in 
a depressing story. I think I have been known to not only tell bad stories, but uh, tell stories that are not not the most uh, uplifting, and I just don't even realize it until it's over. It's like, oh, that was that was depressing. Depressingly is an adverb. So yesterday I did a woo sound effect, but I feel like I should do something different. I don't know if I want to do a full on scream. I don't. I you know I live in a building and share walls with people, so they might that might freak them out. Um, but maybe maybe we can do some fun sound effect. Uh, maybe we should just change it up for each one. We'll see what happens. The first sound effect is going to be. Ah! I'm trying to keep it a little quiet. Depression is the next word. Uh, this is a noun from the 14th century, 1A. Now, you know, we automatically think of the the emotional depression, the mental depression, the chemical depression in our bodies and brains, but that's, as we learned in the previous episode, that's not always what it is. There's other things that can have d a depression, like 1A, the angular distance of a celestial object below the horizon. So, what are we talking about? Um, uh, something in the sky, a planet, a star, our star, the sun. Um, they're in the sky, and if you look at them, if they're below the horizon, so way out in the distance, as far as you can see, is the horizon, and then if they are below that, the angular distance of a celestial object below the horizon. So, if it's 45 degrees below the horizon... 90 degrees would be straight below you, uh, but 45 degrees would be halfway between that and the horizon. And so I guess that would be like a 45 degree depression angle. Is that it? Or is it the dis di the distance? I know it's the angular distance. I don't know. I don't know. But I hope I gave you at least some visual context if you learn better that way. Depression. 1B. The size of an angle of depression. So that would be, I think, the actual angle, like the 45 degree angle. The other one is the distance, but it's all different distance. I don't know, how do you measure the distance? Um, it, the, the sun is a lot closer than those stars that are way out there, which, and the planets are, you know. So I, I, I yeah, distances and angles below the horizon. Number two, an act of depressing or a state of being depressed as to a, a pressing down, and the synonym is lowering. So this is the literal act of pressing a thing down. To be one, a state of feeling sad. So this is still under an act of depressing or a state of being depressed. A was a physical pressing down of a thing like a key, like and maybe an elevator, although I don't know who can press down an elevator. Um, but then to be, to be one specifically, is a state of feeling sad. This is your emotion. How do you feel? Your synonym, your synonym, the synonym is dejection. And wow, we have a lot of sub, subs for two. Uh, so to be two, this is the biggie. This one is literally the biggest one in this section. It's almost four full lines. A psychoneurotic or psychotic disorder marked especially by sadness, inactivity, difficulty in thinking and concentration, a significant increase or decrease in appetite, and time spent sleeping, feelings of dejection and hopelessness, and sometimes suicidal tendencies. And hoo-wee, there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, I feel like, should we just talk about that now? Okay, let's talk about that now. That's fine. Um, okay, so I mean, I guess I'll just quickly go through each of those. If, if you need a little bit more context, uh, it's psychoneurotic or psychotic. So this is, this is a brain stuff. That's the best thing I can tell you there. Um, sadness. I think we all know what sadness is inactivity. You don't want to move. You don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to do anything. That's essentially like you just feel like nothing. Just doing nothing. Um, which is why I think often this comes with uh, that last section, sometimes suicidal tendencies, 
uh, you know, I can speak from experience. It's just a lot of thoughts of what's the point? Why? Why anything? I don't even need to be depressed to think about those things. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of, uh, well, you know, that's uh, we're all going to die anyway. Oh, I feel like I shouldn't talk about this too much. Um, okay, there's also difficulty in thinking and concentration. Yeah, you're it's it's hard to concentrate. You you're in such a state of just dark cloud and feeling of worthlessness and everything, and it's hard to think of anything else. So your brain just it's so focused on this thing. Uh, significant increase or decrease in appetite and sleep. So either lots of sleep or not a lot of sleep. Uh, I think often it probably comes with lots of sleep because, again, there's that inactivity. You just want to lay in bed and do nothing all the time. Um, and then uh, appetite, eating a lot or not eating a lot. I would assume that increase in appetite is probably more common than decrease in appetite um, because... I know just if I'm bored, I just, you want to go eat. I don't think I'm alone in thinking that. Um, but then if you've got this depression on top of that, then, you know, you may not want to get off the couch, but if you're looking for something to do, you feel like you should do something. Eating is usually the first thing that people go to, you know, I, it's uh try, try not to eat too much or too little. I'm trying to, you know, sometimes you just eat something if you're bored and maybe that's not the best thing. Eat when you're hungry. Drink when you're thirsty. Feelings of dejection and hopelessness. Yeah, this just comes from all that a thought of what's the point and I'm not worthy. And, you know, this is a great place to uh, to plug, you know, a suicide helpline, uh, any sort of mental health thing. Um, if you have these thoughts, you know, maybe you can get maybe you can take some pills. Maybe you can go to therapy. All those things are very, very helpful. And uh uh, especially if this is a thing that comes comes often for you, then then that's probably a sign that um, medication, therapy, all those things uh, are going to help, I think. So well, I'm going to definitely have to put some links to those things in the show notes. And uh, I, I think that most people get depression to some degree. Most people are probably a pretty low degree. It's like, oh, it's a day or it's a couple of days or even a half a day. Uh, or an hour it comes and goes. You know, I I feel like sometimes you get a roller coaster of emotions just within a day, depending on what's happening. But then there are other people who are you know clinically depressed, and they could have these bouts for days, weeks, months, possibly years. And um, I think personally, I think that uh, some form of therapy is probably the best thing to do. I feel like working on the actual reasons, the the underlying issues of why something like this might be happening, I think those are the best things to work at other than going to, say, just medication. Now, I don't know if there's any doctors out there who are prescribing just medication. They're probably prescribing it with therapy. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, you got to do at least therapy, possibly both. Um, you know, it, and this is, this is a chemical brain thing. I think this was a thing that I didn't even understand until I got older, that it's not a thing of like, oh, just be happy. It's not that easy. You know, there, there are chemical changes going on in your brain and therefore your body. And, uh, it's, it's, it just sucks. It just sucks. Uh, I, you know, I've had a couple of rough days, uh, just at work, but, um, it's nothing compared to the level of depression that I have personally experienced in my past. Um, I was probably, you know, just going through some stuff or had to get my mind around things. And I feel like I'm I'm in a much better mental place. I didn't do therapy, but I feel like maybe I did my own personal therapy and just really thought about, you know, what's going on with me in the world and all those things. And I have a friend right now who is going through a maybe like the third depression bout that he's had in the last year. Uh, you know, that's that's a lot. And he is actively working on it. He's going through therapy and I think taking medication. So I'm really happy for that. But, you know, that's a thing that some people might just have to deal with often. And uh, you just got to work on it. You just got to work on it. You got you got to do the things because because 
I, I firmly believe that we all have worth and purposes and uh, to, to see to see people take their lives because of those things is just heartbreaking. Uh, right off the top of my head, I can think of a, a, a somebody I knew maybe five or ten years ago who I think they were they were having some some issues and uh, they ended up taking their life and uh, that that just felt so unnecessary to the rest of us and I know that that's not how they felt but um, you know we it's so often that other people see the worth in you and it's so hard to see it in yourself I think it is time to move did I say this is a scary episode super scary for Halloween I think it is time to move on. I hope that I have covered that as much as my brain can. And, uh, I, you know, there's just a lot of stuff to talk about that. There's always more. 2C1. A reduction in activity, amount, quality, or force is a depression. I hope that you are not now depressed from all this stuff. I hope that maybe it had the opposite effect, but you know, if you want to talk, email me. 2C2, a lowering of vitality or functional activity. 3, a depressed place or part, and the synonym is hollow, like the hollow part of a tree. It's been depressed. It's indented into the tree, the bark, the wood, how did it happen? Maybe there's a little nest of squirrels. If you're going through some depression, I think you need to think of a nest of squirrels with baby squirrels in it, and that will make you happy. Four, it is the 1B definition for the word low. And five, a period of low general economic activity, economic activity marked especially by rising levels of unemployment. We have seen this even in our lifetime. Just, uh, well, you know, depending on your age, 15 years ago, 14, 14 years ago, we had a, quite a depression, then the, especially in the housing market. And then, of course, there's the famous one from 1929. And uh, I wonder, maybe if I have a moment, I'll do a little research. I wonder how that one compared to what we have experienced more recently. Uh, you know, we, we see all these images from 1929 depression of rich people in their clothes, homeless and on the streets with no money and can't afford food. Um, I, I don't know if it's that there's some, some level of romanticizing these black and white photos or something. But, you know, I wonder, was that from like a percentage stock level point, was that worse, way worse than what we've lived through recently? or not as bad. I don't know. I have no concept of like how much money was lost or I don't know. And then of course that, that whole thing brings up the stocks and how, how roller coastery and wishy washy that whole system is makes no sense. Okay. We have to move on to the next word. Depression glass, two words. Um, the, the the capital D, the D is capitalized in the first word. Two words, noun, from 1971. Tinted glassware, machine produced during the 1930s. Oh, what does the 1930s remind you of? Yes, the Great Depression that uh, says it was from 1929 to about 1939. So an entire decade was considered the Depression where people just had no money, it feels like. Uh, some people probably did fairly well, but... Um, so, yeah, they made this glass specifically during that time period. So, there must have been some reason, something that's different about this glass. They probably had to do a different process or use different ingredients to make this glass. I don't know if ingredients is the right word there. Um, so, maybe I'll put in a link in the show notes... So you can also read up on why is it depression glass? It can't just be, well, it says it's tinted. So maybe they couldn't make it perfectly clear. 
what's perfectly clear is that we're going to move on to the next word. Whoa. I think I kind of like that sound effect. The next word is depressive or depressive. First form, adjective from 1620. Number one, tending to depress. That could be physically or emotionally. Number two, of relating to, marked by, or affected by psychological depression. As in, depressive symptoms. Also as in, a depressive patient. Also, hopefully not in, a depressive podcast episode. Oh, I could make this much more depressing if I wanted to. Depressively is an adverb. (laughs) <laughs> the second form of depressive noun from 1937 if those creepy laughs sound fake it might be because maybe i put some sort of effect on them to make it more more uh more effective the second form for depressive one who is affected with or prone to psychological depression. You, yes, you can call... Well, we kind of had that in the last word, even though it was an adjective. A depressive patient. That's a patient who was described as being depressive. Or you could just call the patient a depressive. That's just... That's the noun. Feels... Feels mean to call a person a depressive. I mean, maybe it's technically right. They're affected with depression or prone to depression... They're depressive, but it just makes them sound... That's... That, I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to call somebody a depressive. <laughs> the next word is depressor, with an O-R at the end. Noun from 1611. One that depresses. As A, a muscle that draws down a part. And you can compare this to... Levator or levator. Not sure how exactly to pronounce that one. That's a funny word. Levator. But so these are the muscles. So some of the muscles, um, you know, they go, there's two sets of them usually because they make the thing move in two different directions. And some of them make the muscle, make that, that, that arm, that whatever it is, uh, they make it, uh, move down, draws down. And then the levator, levator, uh, it, it does the opposite. It raises it up, raises it up. So uh, I, I maybe maybe we'll put a link or we will post a social media thing that talks about specifically which muscles or what are examples of these depressor muscles. Because I can't really think of any off the top of my head. B, so this is all still under one that depresses, B. A device for pressing down or aside. Just just move it over there. Down? No. Oh, just over a side there. C. A nerve or nerve fiber that decreases the activity or the tone of the organ or the part it innervates. So the nerve or the nerve fiber, it's uh, decreasing the activity or the whatever to an organ... Or, or to the part, the nerve also, de- it's decreasing the activity uh, to the part that the organ is, is working with, is deals with, it innervates, or the nerve is innervating, and it's, you, you have to, it's, a, it's a depressor nerve. Again, I don't, I'm not familiar with these kinds of nerves. They slow down, they, they decrease the activity? Why can't a regular nerve do that? Next word. <laughs> depressurize transitive verb from 1944 to release pressure from and depressurization is a noun so why did this why was this invented in 1944 that feels like it should be a world war ii thing maybe with a submarine but i feel like submarines were probably invented before that probably much before that but also planes you gotta pressurize planes but there were planes before 1944 a little bit but maybe they didn't go high enough where they had to be pressurized so yeah maybe maybe it was a uh, military planes they uh, they're like ooh if we pressurize this thing we can go higher we can fly higher we can fly high yeah i don't know why that sounds like a song it should be a song 
Um, and so that that's probably that. And maybe uh, submarines, maybe if they wanted to go lower, they could pressurize them. Can you imagine the engineering, the smarty fucking people who could figure out how to do this? It's so beyond my level of comprehension of life in the world. <laughs> the next word is deprivation or deprivation. Noun from the 15th century. One, the state of being deprived. And the synonym? Is this a synonym? Privation. So it's the same word without the D-E. Again, why are we seeing this? Privation and deprivation are the same thing. Being deprived? Hmm, I wonder if the word privation says the synonym deprivation. Uh, that is so strange. Again, we have seen that a lot. Especially the state of being deprived, especially removal from an office, dignity, or benefice. Oh, you're being deprived of your office. What? Why? Number two, an act or instance of depriving. The synonym is loss. A deprivation is a loss. We have, if you lose, if you lose your sports game, you have been deprived of the great feelings. Oh, maybe you are, uh, maybe you are in a depression if you lose your game. That could happen. <laughs> Deprive is the next word. This is a transitive verb from the 14th century. Number one is obsolete, and the synonym is remote. Remote? What sort of... Oh, no, 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 no. It says remove. Okay, I really do need new glasses. Uh, luckily, I just bought some, but I need to get an eye test and then get new lenses. But I found the frames that I've been wanting for years. I couldn't find ones that are good. So remove is a synonym of deprive, but it is obsolete. Yeah, if you're removing something from your life, you are depriving yourself of it. That makes sense. Two, to take something away from, as in deprived him of his professorship. That's a quote from J.M. Phelan with a PH. De deprived him of his professorship. Professorship, professorship. Wonder why, wonder why he has to be deprived of his professorship. He maybe probably did something wrong. I don't know why else you'd deprive somebody of their professorship. Number three, to remove from office. Four, to withhold something from, as in deprived a citizen of her rights. Oh, I don't like that at all. No, I don't. I do. You got some rights. You should not be deprived of them. This is from the Latin de deprivare, de plus pro, privare, have to be correct here. That means to deprive. So does privare mean to deprive or does de privare mean to deprive? Or is it both? I don't know because I just recently, I just posted this episode, I think. There was an etymology where it, it was de D, uh, oh God, where was it? D, populate, depopulate. This one, um, it says that the populari verb means to ravage, but when I looked it up online, it said that the verb is actually de populari. I don't understand why the book didn't say de populari means to ravage, and then it is from de plus populari, which actually means to populate. The book, I feel like, has gotten it wrong here. And maybe it's just my misinterpretation of where you're putting the English definition, but I'm pretty sure I've seen it in the other place before. Apologies for this rant, but, um, you know, I want to give you correct information, and if I'm saying something wrong, it's, it's just because I'm reading it. Um, so, that was all stemmed from deprive, deprivare, priware, means to deprive... And there's just more at the word private. It's private. <laughs> Deprived. With a D at the end, it is an adjective from circa 1552, marked by deprivation, especially of the necessities of life or of healthful environmental influences. As in, culturally deprived children. These children, we gotta, we can't deprive them of culture. 
what are they being left in a closet and don't get to socialize uh they're de- being deprived of the necessities of life you, yeah you don't, we need the necessities of life you need that social interaction and the culture and the seeing learning about the world not a big fan of things that are deprived um or when things are deprived the next word oh we're almost at the end <laughs> deprogram deprogram transitive verb from 1973 there is one i'm trying to figure out where this example starts okay there is it starts there one good good decent length definition to dissuade or try to dissuade from strongly held convictions as religious beliefs or in a firmly established or innate behavior. So without the parentheses, it says to dissuade. I'm just going to simplify this to dissuade from strongly held convictions or a firmly established or innate behavior. So it's a behavior or a, a conviction, a thing that you believe in. And, ooh, yeah, deprogram. This this is a thing. I just don't know if this is even possible. Uh, maybe for certain people. I don't know. So religious beliefs. Uh, a lot of people say, maybe one could argue, that people who are quite religious are, uh, you know, programmed, indoctrinated, brainwashed. There's many other words that one could use uh, going along a whole spectrum. But uh, some people believe that. And, uh, you know, maybe if you get to a lot of people have gotten to a point where they realize that's not for them and they maybe consciously deprogram or somehow figure out a way to deprogram all the things that they were told to believe, which may or may not be true. You got to think for yourself, I think. Um, and so that deprogram and then innate behaviors, you know, this is, this is like, you know, nail biting is one of the first ones you think of. Um, if it's a thing that is maybe harming you or harming somebody else or just maybe not doesn't make you feel great for whatever reason, you know, maybe it's time to deprogram that thing from your life. And yeah, there's a whole, whole big range of things that that could be things that you may want to deprogram from your life. There is an example here, the necessity of countering propaganda and deprogramming the indoctrinated. They have been indoctrinated but maybe we need to deprogram there's a deprogramming happening that is a quote from tony cade bambara bambara deprogrammer that is a noun we have one more word for this episode it's a short a little abbreviation hello little abbreviation <laughs> d-e-p-t it just stands for department. I, I write this a lot. Um, okay, I think it's time to reread the words real quick. We had depressing, depression, depression glass, depressive, depressive, depressor, depressurize, deprivation, deprive, deprived, deprogram, and dep, 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 dep. Well, I think I just have to pick depression as the word of the episode because it's just the super big topic that, you know, I think we're a lot better as a society talking about it than we used to be by far. But, you know, I think we need to just normalize it more. And we yeah, we're doing a good job. Just need to do better. If you got it, talk about it. Don't, it's just mental health things in general. Don't uh, try not to feel embarrassed because I think virtually everybody has something everybody's fucked up so let's all party so depression oh i'm there's probably songs that have depression in the title in the song somewhere um but i can't think of any depression depression let's all have some fun with depression depression Eh, wasn't too bad wasn't too de- de- depressing depressing hey let's end this episode thank you very much for listening and until next time this is spencer dispensing information bye hello word nerds welcome to the dictionary i am spencer and i am reading you the dictionary 
in just the most fun way possible. Well, that might not be true. It is a way. Maybe we can make it more fun someday. The first word in this episode is depth. D-E-P-T-H, depth. You got to get the sound in there. The the pronunciation is exactly the same as the word, D-E-P-T-H. Noun from the 14th century, 1A1, a deep place in a body of water, as in fish living at great depths. Any size body of water, the deepest part, the fish living at the deepest part, the deepest part, are living in the great depths. Uh, Yeah, I would think uh, sharks and whales and other large fishes and mammals probably live at great depths because they can. Um, Maybe smaller bottles, bodies of water, bottles of water, smaller bodies of water. You know, you're going to have smaller fish, but they're still at great depths. Maybe the coelacanth lived or lives at great depths. 1A2, a part that is far from the outside or surface, as in the depths of the woods. Maybe there is a cabin in the depths of the woods. The depths of the woods. So while it's hard to say, it might be a good name for a movie. Uh, all the way deep, right inside of the center of the woods. That's the deepest. They're far from the outside of the thing or the surface of the thing. 1A3. It is the number two definition for the word abyss, which, of course, is just a very large, deep thing. So it's the depth. 1B1. There are so many definitions. A profound or intense state, as of thought or feeling, as in the depths of misery. How appropriate. We were just talking about misery and sadness and those sorts of things in the previous episode. So uh, the the depression is in the depths of feelings. Uh, Yeah. Also, there's more to the definition. A reprehensibly low condition, as in, hadn't realized that standards had fallen to such depths. The standards are so low, we didn't even know that the standards were so low. They Nobody told us the standards had changed. And, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. My brain doesn't always uh, think can't always get the things out that I want to say, and then they're just trapped behind a wall, I feel like. It's okay, we get enough. 1B2. Like, these letters and numbers are so spread out at this point, it takes a second to figure out where we're at. 1B2. The middle of a time. The middle of a time. And the example is winter. The middle of winter would be the depths. You're the depths of of winter. I don't know if we would call the middle of summer the depths of summer. For some reason, depth and winter feels, they, they just feel like they go more hand in hand. When you're in the middle of winter, it's just it's just deep and sorrowful and sad and there's less light. And uh, so, so that's what I think about that one. 1B3, the worst part. Just the worst part of anything is the depths. Hmm. 2A. There's a lot of definitions for this word. 2A. The perpendicular measurement downward from a surface. So when you are measuring a, say, a rectangular box, there's the length, there is the width, and then there is the depth. And this specifically says that it's the measurement down from the surface. So if the thing is flat, the top part is probably the surface. And then you measure down to the bottom, to the floor, to the part that's sitting on the floor, and that is the depth. But I think it's all up to your your perception, your opinion, however you feel like you want to label things as length, width, and depth. 2B. The direct linear measurement from front to back. See, here it is again. You know, it's it could be front to back. It could be even side to side, even though that one's not in here, or top to bottom. Any one of those can be the depth. You, you choose what you like 
for the depth. Number three, the quality of being deep. So maybe if you have some very deep thoughts by Jack Handy, you have depth. Jack Handy had lots of depth. Four, the degree of intensity, as, a, as in depth of a color. What is the degree? How intense it is? Is that like the saturation of a color maybe if it's really... But I know I, I think of like a deep red as being... Hmm. I guess in my mind, I think of a deep red as being pretty saturated, but also darker on the darker side. So, but that's two qualities. And this one is just the degree of intensity. How intense is that color? Does it have deepness? Wait, there's an also section. The quality of being profound. This has nothing to do with color. Uh, the quality, the quality of being profound, as in insight or full as of knowledge. So insight, you can be profound in insight, or you can be full of knowledge. And the quality of those things, that is the, your depth, the depth of the depth of your knowledge. How deep are you in your knowledge? I'm not very deep in my knowledge, which is why I'm reading the book, this book, this dictionary, this book. I'm learning it for myself, and I'm listening to it later, which helps me remember it. And I'm going to listen to it when I'm older so I can remember everything about my life. And then the knowledge, and then also insight. What is, what is your insight? Ooh, that, that'll be a fun word to talk about when we get there. Five, the quality or state of being complete or thorough, as in, a study will be made in depth. We are going to study the crap out of that thing. Such depth will be studied. Six, the last one, a large number of good players, as in, a team that lacks depth. They do not have a large number of good players. Maybe they have a large number of bad players. There's no depth there. Depthless is an adjective. There is two versions of a phrase, beyond one's depth or out of one's depth. And that means beyond the limits of one's capabilities, as in an actor who is out of his depth in serious drama. There have been a lot of comedy actors uh, later in their career doing doing some some more serious stuff. Uh, there's a, I'm sure you can think of a lot of people off the top of your head. So so though it is not out of their depth to do serious drama. But yes, there are probably some comedic actors who just really they have a hard time with the drama. I know personally, I would have a hard time with it because I just. I just prefer to be silly and have fun, but you know, I think I think there's some fun in in drama too. Hey, that those were all the definitions finally for the word depth. Uh, it is just from the Middle English "dep," which means deep, deep in depth. Sound effect time! Hoo wee! Whoop! Next is depth charge. Two words. Noun from 1917, so I'm going to assume that this is from World War I. An anti-submarine weapon that consists essentially of a drum filled with explosives, which is dropped near a target and descends to a predetermined death depth where it explodes. And it is called also depth bomb. So this is used to get rid of submarines. They say, oh, the, the submarines, they're uh, often at this level, so we're going to make these these bombs, these charges, that once they hit this certain depth, which sp actually is more of a, a, a specific pressure, once it hits a pressure, then it's going to, the drum is probably going to break. I'm just guessing here. And then once the drum breaks, the explosives go. And, uh, and then hopefully it's f by your enemy's submarine, and then everybody dies. Oh, yay, we killed a bunch of people. Uh, so yeah, depth charge, depth bomb. Are these the things that uh, that look... Oh, no, this, I think those are different. They're, they're things that have like a bunch of pokey things out from a sphere, but I think those are more when you when it gets touched, then, then, then that's when it uh, explodes. This one's more about a, a depth pressure thing. Next word. Boop, boop. Depth of field, three words from 1911. So this is in the early, early stages of photography and 
filmography, video filming, that stuff. This is the range of distances of the object in front of an image forming device as a camera lens measured along the axis of the device throughout which the image has acceptable sharpness. That was a fun, long, excessive way to say that, although it's it's accurate. So basically, you got a camera, you got a lens, you can draw an axis from the camera and the lens going straight out through the center of the lens to the subject that you are shooting. The What this is saying is that depending on some camera factors, which I'm not going to go into, but depending on various factors, there is a depth of field. There is a section. There's a front, which is closer to the camera, and there's a, a back of it, which is further away from the camera. And everything in between those two planes um, are in focus or essentially, you know, might as well be in focus. You know, when you get closer to the edges, they might get a tiny bit softer, but, you know, it's basically everything in there. And I think there's there's a little, yeah. Anyway, so that's the depth of field. where You will often see DOF, which I think, did we have that? No, we didn't have that. Uh, but I do remember kind of talking about this at one point. So, you know, in front of the depth of field, closer to the camera, things are going to be out of focus. And behind the depth of field, things will also be out of focus. And so you can you can play with that. You can have very, very shallow depth of field, you know, maybe an inch or less. And so it's a very small section that's in focus and then everything else is blurry. And you can that, you know, that's a fun look depending on if that's what you're going for. Or you can have a very, very wide depth of field, typically with a wide angle lens where you see a whole bunch of things and lots of things are in focus. There is a lens called a tilt shift lens. And I think it's specifically the tilt portion of it could be the shift. I don't remember. Um, that uh, your depth of field does not have to be flat uh, perpendicular to the camera. Uh, it can You can angle it in lots of and lots of different ways, and you can get some really, really weird, cool effects with that. So you could have maybe a thing on the left side of the screen that's close to the camera that's in focus, and then you can have a thing in the same shot that's maybe further back, but on the right side also be in focus, and everything in between them is also in focus. So it's at an angle instead of being perpendicular to the camera. Okay, now you know everything about depth of field. Not really. Whoop. The next word is depth perception. Two words, noun from circus, uh, 1911. Same, same year as depth of field, although this one is not about cameras, I don't think. The ability to judge the distance of objects and the spatial relationship of objects at different distances. So this is with your eyes. You have two eyes, which allows you to see in depth. Stereoscopic vision is what we got, baby. And uh, so because you have basically two lenses in your head, for the people who have two eyes that are working... Uh, you can see things at slightly different angles, which means that you can see whether things are close to you or far away from you. So if you close an eye, you have no depth perception. You can't tell whether something is far away or close. Um, I think I heard hamsters or something. Probably a lot of other small animals don't really have any depth perception, probably because they don't need much of it because they, they're dealing with a, such a small scale. So if you hold them up from the floor up high they're going to jump off your hand because they don't have any idea that the floor is far away. But we have a better a better time with that. Um, depth perception, anything else about that? Yeah, it's uh, it's very cool. You know, 3D uh, 3D movies and th those, those magic eye things, they don't really deal with depth perception, but they deal with it in the sense of uh, stereoscopic vision. I love being able to see in three dimensions. Next. Whoa, Depth psychology, two words, noun from 1924. The synonym is just psychoanalysis, psychoanalysis, but then also psychology concerned especially with the unconscious mind, the mind that is in the, in the depths of your consciousness. Maybe you are not aware, which is why it's unconscious. What's going on in the deep, deep? Well, we, what we often say brain, you know, because we think much of our consciousness is there, but I don't, we don't know if that's entirely true. So we say the mind. It's a more ethereal idea. 
so yeah, I think mostly now psychoanalysis gets used instead of saying depth psychology. The next word is deputation. Deputation. Noun from the 14th century. One, the act of appointing a deputy. Two, a group of people appointed to represent others. So if you are deputizing, that's that's a word we're about to get to. If you're deputizing a deputy, you're doing a deputation. And then just a bunch of group of people representing people, maybe in the legal world, they are a deputation. Because probably they have been, yeah, they've been appointed. They they are, well, let's, we'll learn about deputy very soon. But first, we have to talk about, boo, depute. This is a transitive verb from the 14th century. The synonym is delegate. Uh, Let's see, this is from Lower Latin, deputare, which means to assign. Also, is this also deputare? It means to consider as, to consider, and then parentheses as. And that says it's from de plus putare, which means to consider. So is putare and deputare both mean to consider? Latin, why you do this to me? Depute is to delegate things to, you're assigning things to other people to do. Boo! Next word is deputize. Verb from circa 1736. Uh, Transitive is to appoint as deputy. I want you to be my deputy, so I'm going to deputize you in a deputation. Intransitive for deputize, to act as deputy. You are the, now the deputy, and you have been deputized. Deputization is a noun. Boo, woo, woo, woo. The next word is deputy. What is a deputy, you may ask? Noun from the 15th century. 1A, a person appointed as a substitute with power to act. I think we mostly hear this when a police officer makes a deputy. Uh, well, there there are deputies in the police department, and so uh, they can they can help out. They're they're they are cops, but they can jump in and help out. They have some level of power or can act with power when needed to. One B, a second in command. Okay, so the first one is the person appointed. So you can say I a cop a police officer can make a deputy and say, hey, I am uh, giving you permission to act with power in this situation because we need your help. Or there's one B, a second in command or assistant who usually takes charge when his or her superior is absent. And I feel like we just see this a lot in movies and TV shows. That's the only time I get to experience anything in, of like that. And uh, so, yeah, there's a maybe it's a small town. There's a cop. And then there's a second in command, and they have to take charge at some point in the movie when the other person can't. Two, a member of the lower house of some legislative assemblies. So that is deputy, and we talked about all the other forms. Deputize, depute, deputation. Although, I don't know. Yeah, I guess depute still fits in that world. No more DEP words. Next, we have... Boo! Der, D E R or deriv. I guess it would be dare or deriv, abbreviation for derivation or derivative. And of course, those words will be coming up in the future. Next, boop 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 boop. Deracinate, deracinate. This is a transitive verb from 1599. Number one, the synonym is uproot. Two, to remove or separate from a native environment or culture, especially to remove the racial or ethnic characteristics or influences from. Mm -hmm. That's a whole big topic. Deracination is a noun. That is the the act of doing this, that's the thing, when you deracinate. Now, I would want to say deracinate, but I guess maybe just because of how English works, you say deracinate. 
Um, okay, what does the etymology say? Because, you know, I think we can see some stuff in here. Um, from Middle French, der des Racinaire, from des or de plus racine, which means root. From the Latin radic or radix, and there's more at the word root, but what is interesting is, you know, racial, race, I guess those words, well, they're, they're kind of in this word, deracinate, but I guess guess those come from the Latin, from the word root, for root. So, hmm, that's just a really interesting thing to think about that we'll obviously have to talk more about when we get to the word race and racial and all that stuff. Um, so let's reread the number two definition again. Just to, just to remind all of ourselves about this. This is to remove or separate from a native environment or culture. So removing the people who are from an area, removing them or separating them from that area. But especially, this is much more specific, to remove the racial or ethnic characteristics or influences from. So, oh, I don't know, let's look at Australia and all of the Aboriginal, the people who have been living there for thousands and thousands of years. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of removing their ethnic characteristics, influences, their culture, their race. There's been a lot of removing of that. So there was a deracination happening in that place and a lot of other places. Hope, 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 hope we're not seeing any more of this. Oh, sometimes, this is not really in this case, but I just wanted to do a segue. Whoop. Are we getting derailed? No. We just talk a lot about things. It's not derailed. We're just... But that's our next word, derail. Verb from 1850, first is transitive. One, to cause, to run off the rails. Literally, a train. That's what that would be. Maybe somebody put a coin on the tracks. Don't do that, because that can literally cause a train to go to be derailed and have an accident. Or maybe the train slammed into something, and then it went off the rails. Let's not make trains go derailing 2a to obstruct the progress of synonym is frustrate as in security problems derailed the tour Uh uh-oh can't go on the tour no more it's we are very frustrated that we can't go on the tour The, the the progress of our tour has ended because we got derailed for some reason 2b to upset the stability or composure of, as in, divorce can seriously derail an employee. That is a quote from Joanne Gordon. Was Joanne Gordon talking about personal experience? Uh, If an employee is going through a divorce, then that can be a very hard thing to go through, and their, their life is just derailed. There is one intransitive which says, to leave the rails... Just, hey, I'm, I'm just going to leave the rails now. The train rails, the other kinds of rails, nope, I'm, I'm leaving. Derailment is a noun. This is from French, derailleur. How do you say this word? Derailleur, derailleur. That means to throw off the track. That's pretty much it. Boop. The next word is derailleur. Derailer. It is spelled D E R A I L L E U R. So this is clearly French. Maybe they would probably say derailleur. I don't know. Noun from 1930. A mechanism for shifting gears on a bicycle that operates by moving the chain from one set of exposed gears to another. I had no idea that that had a very French name. I'm sure all you biker people did. And, uh, you know, the name makes sense because if you if you say one set of exposed gears is kind of like a rail, a thing is the, the, the chain is, uh, it's not attached, but it's, it's uh, there's grooves and things that, that fit around to the gear, so it's working on one gear, and then you can move it. You can derail it to another set of gears. Uh, so yeah, it's a derailer, derailer, 
we have one more word for this episode. Woohoo! Finally. Woo! Derange. <laughs> Derange. This is spelled D E R A N G E. It is a verb from 1769, and I think it is just transitive. This is a fun word. One, to disturb the operation or functions of. I mean, you could also say derail for something like that, but no, this is derange. Number two, the synonym is disarrange. Disarrange, as in hatless with tie deranged. And that is a quote from G.W. Stonier. Hatless with tie deranged. That sounds like G.W. was explaining somebody who uh, maybe had a real rough day or maybe was pretty drunk. They lost their hat and their tie was just all sorts of messed up. Deranged. Number three, to make insane. To make insane. Let's go derange to... Now... When I first read derange, that's kind of what I was thinking of, like, ooh, I'm deranged. But I then sort of second-guessed myself, well, maybe that's spelled with a D-I? I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll find another word that's similar to this. But to make insane is derange. Derange in the membrane. Derangement is a noun. Uh, this is from Old French desranger which is from des or de plus reng, R-E-N-G, which means line or row. And there's more of the word rank. So if a thing is taken out of its organizational method, out of its line, its row, then it has been deranged. It's not arranged. If you arrange things into lines and rows, you're making it all nice and neat. But this is undoing that process. Derange. All right. What... What were the words that we had today? We had depth, depth charge, depth of field, depth perception, depth psychology, deputation, depute, deputize, deputy, dare, deracinate, derail, derailer, and derange. Hmm. I mean, I like things to be organized, but I also kind of like the idea of derange, but I don't know if I'm going to pick that one. Uh, deracinate is obviously a very important word, but I don't like the idea of deracinating because it's removing the racial or ethnic characteristics or influences from. I think we need to keep, we need to keep all of our stuff, you know, we need to, we need the, we need the, uh, the diversity. Um, and I'm now debating between depth perception and depth of field. Uh, um, I think depth perception is very interesting and useful to us, especially to animals out in the wild who can do that. Uh, but I don't know. Depth of field, I think that that's just a really interesting one. From Because, you know, I, I, do when, I do photography and videography stuff, and so it's something I deal with and... Uh, you know, it can really change the, the mood, the, the feeling, the tone, the emotion of, a, of an image, depending on what the, what the depth of field is like. So, depth of field, depth of field, what's in the depth of field? Is it close? Is it far? Is it small? Is it wide? If things are in focus in the depth of field. That was a song, kind of. Um, I think that is going to be the end of this. Oh, real quick, uh, what did we watch? We watched Nosferatu at a theater in Chicago a couple of days ago, and uh, there was a live band playing their own score live to the movie, which was really great and a lot of fun, and uh, seeing it with a crowd, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And it's kind of funny because it's 100 years old. I think that's part of the reason why it's funny, although there are some moments that are, I think, meant to be funny. Uh, yeah. Fun movie to watch, uh, especially in October with a crowd. So if you can do that next year, do that. Oh, I should say the band is the Invincible Czars, C Z A R S, and uh, I think you can uh, you can buy their thing on maybe a DVD or a digital download or something. Go support the artists. That is the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another 
just so exhilarating episode of this podcast called The Dictionary. Thank you very much for joining. I am Spencer. I am reading short sections of this book. Sometimes there are guests. Hopefully I can schedule one pretty soon. Somebody else uh, reached out at me and maybe... So if you have a podcast or a thing and you, you, you know, we can help each other out, maybe we can do something like that. Uh, what else? I think that's good. We gotta talk about the words. Happy November, by the way. Yesterday's episode was the one that uh, aired on November 1st, 2022. Maybe you're listening to this close to when it aired. Probably not. The first word is derate. D-E-R-A-T-E. I don't know if you heard that, but that was my chair squeaking. Can we make it happen again? Not really. Derate. Transitive verb from 1947. To lower the rated capability of because of deterioration or inadequacy. So a thing is old and it's not great, so its capabilities are, are have, have to be lowered. Oh, it used to be a five-star thing, but now we have to derate it to three stars. Um, the examples of what might be derated are electrical or mechanical apparatus or apparati to be plural about it uh, you know um a hotel might not may not be derated but you know if it if it becomes deteriorated and is not great anymore then maybe it does need to be derated sound effect time be you the next word is derby and the british say darby is that, let's just confirm the pronunciation, I believe that is correct, where, yeah, Darby. It's just D-E-R-B-Y. Noun from 1796. One, any of several horse races held annually and usually restricted to three-year-olds. Now, I'm pretty sure they mean that the horses are restricted to three-year-olds, maybe Maybe they can be younger, maybe not older, but of course, how can you not think that going to see one of these races, you can only be three years old to watch it. Now I just want to see a stadium filled with three-year-olds betting on horses. Oh, that would be great. Um, I do have to say that I'm not a fan of this kind of thing. I don't think the horses are treated well. Uh, you know, these are just my personal opinions, but I have to say it whenever we come across things like this. So I have not and never will go to a derby. Two, a race or contest open to all comers or to a specified category of contestants, as in a bicycle derby. Three, a man's stiff felt hat with a dome-shaped crown and narrow brim. Maybe we, we got to post a picture of this on social media at DictionaryPod on Twitter and Instagram. There's Facebook, too. Um, stiff fat felt hat, dome-shaped crown. It's a derby hat. I think I can imagine this, but I don't know if you can. So go check, uh, check the Instagram if you want to see it or just look it up yourself. But yeah, it's just a, it's just like a, it's just like a, it's a bowl. It's a bowl on the top of your head and it's felt and it's got a rim around it. I don't think I would look very good in a derby hat. Is it called a derby hat because the people at a derby wear it? They have to wear a derby hat to go to a derby? Where did this word come from? It came from Edward Stanley. His name isn't Edward Derby or Darby. It's Edward Stanley. He died in 1834, and he was the 12th Earl of Derby or Darby, probably Darby. So I guess, uh, well, A, maybe these horse races were started there or just, uh, yeah, probably just some sort of race. And then maybe there was just a very common hat or maybe Edward Stanley wore this hat all the time. Who knows? But that's where this word came from. Next. Derbies with a capital D and a YS. This is an abbreviation for, it's probably pronounced Derbyshire, 
um, it's I don't know if I said synonym. It's just that's no, that's just what it's an abbreviation for. We're not going to see that word here in the book because it would be literally the next word. But um, yeah, I I think they would pronounce it Derbyshire in the UK. It looks like Derbyshire, but I don't believe that's how it's said. Now I don't know what this is. It's probably a location that gets abbreviated to Derbys or Derbys something. Hmm. Maybe we got to put a link in the show notes. Next word. Derealization. Derealization. Noun from 1942. A feeling of altered reality in which one's surroundings appear unreal or unfamiliar. The examples um, of this altered reality are those occurring in schizophrenia or in some drug reactions. So, if you were like, what is this thing? How can your surroundings appear unreal or unfamiliar? You probably don't have schizophrenia or have not had uh, certain drug reactions. So, I, that's that's that for that. Um, what? How? 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 Do your surroundings change? How can they feel unreal or unfamiliar? Do they look different? Do they just feel different? How does that even happen? The brain is a very, very crazy thing. So back in 1942 is when they they put they put a word to this thing. They were probably doing some, I'm pretty sure back then, they were doing some, uh, some drug testing, maybe not the most legal or ethical things. And people were like, whoa, dude. My surroundings appear unreal or unfamiliar. I think I'm having a derealization. Next. Derecho. D-E-R-E-C-H-O. Noun from 1889. It is a large, fast-moving complex of thunderstorms with powerful straight-line winds that cause widespread destruction. Not something that you want to be near when it happens. This is a Spanish word, derecho, and it means straight. Um, It says straight when it's contrasted with tornado, uh, because tornado looks to be taken to mean turned. Huh, okay, so... So I guess tornado. Is tornado a Spanish word? I, n- I never even thought about this. Uh, tornado means turned, c- probably just because it's rotating. But a derecho is straight. So it just it's like, hey, I'm coming through. Watch out. Coming through fast, straight on from here to there. That's a derecho. Uh, it is also from the Latin directus. And there's more of the word direct, the first form of direct. So yeah, it sounds like it's just a thing that's coming in Coming in straight and not turning around, not spinning. Huh. I don't know. I knew I've heard of this, but I don't think I ever realized it was straight opposed to turning. Hmm. Okay. Next word. Deregulation. Noun from 1963. The act or process of removing restrictions and regulations. And deregulate is a transitive verb. I feel like there are so many things that have been deregulated or can be or should be. Um, You know, the first thing that I can think of would be, you know, uh, cannabis can be or has been deregulated in some way, but I I think there's a lot of other things. And man, if I was more in the sort of governmental political world, if my brain really worked with that, then... I could give you more information, but I can't. But yeah, it's uh, removing legal restrictions and regulations on a thing. Next. Derelict is the next word. Derelict, derelict. First form, D-E-R-E-L-I-C-T. Adjective from 1649, one Abandoned, especially by the owner or occupant. And then also the synonym, rundown. 
uh, we, like I said in the last episode, we just watched Nosferatu, and in that movie, there is a building uh, that is uh, quite derelict. It looks like it's pretty run down. There's the windows are broken out and stuff, and uh, yeah, so that that's the first thing I thought of when I read that definition: abandoned, especially by the owner or occupant. Number two. Oh, and I should also say that there are lots and lots of these buildings all over the country and the world. Uh, you know, certain certain parts of cities or certain cities in general, uh, just they're they're just run down for whatever reason. Not a lot of money, not a lot of jobs. Yeah, I th- I think you know you get it. Number two, lacking a sense of duty. D U T Y, a sense of duty. This synonym is negligent. So, uh, yeah, if you're just like, like I just don't really care. I'm not going to do my job. I'm, I'm not doing the greatest job. Don't really care about the sense of duty. But my, my work ethic might be not so great. You, they can, That person can be called a derelict. This is from the Latin verb derelinquere. Derelinquere. And that means to abandon. That is from de plus relinquere, which means to leave. And there's more at the word relinquish. So, yeah, it's right there. Leaving, abandoned. The thing is, somebody left. The thing has been abandoned. That's derelict. Pew. Second form of derelict. Noun from 1670, 1A. Something voluntarily abandoned especially a ship abandoned on the high seas. Oh no, why? Why would you leave a ship in the high seas? Uh, Again, I'm going to bring up Nosferatu again. Um, It wasn't quite left abandoned, but there were some people who went away on this boat, and uh, it's when it came to shore... It uh, seemed like it had been abandoned, so it was kind of a derelict ship. 1B, a tract of land left dry by receding water. And, you know, we've we've been seeing a lot of uh, droughts, especially here in America. With, with climate change, there's been a lot. Some areas are getting a lot less water. So other areas are getting too much water and everything in between. And so, yeah, there's a, a lot of water levels are drying up. Which is opposite from some because the poles are uh, melting and so then in a lot of areas the the water is rising. But yeah, in some areas it's just very, very dry and not great. It's a derelict. It has been abandoned of water. Two, a destitute, homeless, social misfit. Synonyms are vagrant and bum. They, the why? Why do we call them a derelict? Why? Because I don't know. They've abandoned a home situation, probably not on purpose. Next word, dereliction is next. Noun from fifteen ninety seven, one a, an intentional abandonment is a dereliction. Gonna leave it abandoned. One b, the state of being abandoned. You are in a state of dereliction. Please don't leave this podcast in a state of being abandoned. I don't want this podcast to be derelict. I want I want more people to come and listen and learn and be entertained. Are you not entertained? Number two, a recession of water leaving permanently dry land. 3A, intentional or conscious neglect, and the synonym is delinquency, as in dereliction of duty. Derelict, if you're not doing your job intentionally or consciously, I quit, and that is a dereliction. 3B synonyms are fault and shortcoming. Next, beep, 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 beep. Derepress is next. So it's repress with a D-E. Transitive verb from 1960. To activate a gene or enzyme by releasing from a blocked state. 
and derepression is a noun. Now, you can emotionally repress things, feelings and memories and stuff, um, but I don't think that's what they're talking about. So then if you recover those feelings or memories, I guess technically that could be a derepression. But this is specifically talking about genes or enzymes. Somehow they've been blocked, and then if you activate them again, that is a derepression. Next. Deride. D-E-R-I-D-E. Transitive verb from circa 1526. 1. To laugh at contemptuously. Hmm, that doesn't sound like a nice laugh. 2. To subject to usually bitter or contemptuous ridicule. Hmm, why, why might you be contemptuously ridiculing somebody or something? Uh, there's a synonym, ridicule. Derider is a noun, and deridingly is an adverb. So, yeah, this is, uh, interestingly, from Latin deridere, which is from de plus ridere or ridere, and that means to laugh. So is it ridere or deridere, which means to laugh? Either way, that's laugh. I feel like maybe there's another Latin word that also means to laugh, and maybe this is certain context. I don't know. I feel like the etymology here, they don't have a lot of space to put in enough information, but I feel like we, we often are missing some something. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Just laughing in a, in a not nice way is deride. Next. De rigueur. De, maybe it's more de rigueur. How do you say this? It's French. De rigueur. Two words. D-E is one word. Second word. R-I-G-U-E-U-R. De rigueur. Adjective from 1833. Prescribed to require by fashion, etiquette, or custom. And the synonym is proper. Proper. De rigueur. Prescribed or required by fashion. So if you, uh, if you, if you are fashionable, if you have etiquette, if you know the customs, I guess you would be de rigueur. I am not de rigueur. Regare, regar. The next word. Beep, 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 boop. Derision. Noun from the 14th century. This is related to deride. 1A. The use of ridicule or scorn to show contempt. Uh, show contempt. What? You're not happy with a person? I, I like to use people as examples. Um, you're not happy with them. You don't like them for some reason. And so you decide that you are going to ridicule or scorn them by using derision. Doesn't seem like it's the best way. I don't know. It seems just kind of nasty. 1B. A state of being derided. Two, an object of ridicule or scorn. So, you can deride a derision by doing derision. Next word, relatedly. Derisive, or derisive, or derisive, or derisive. Ry-ri- Siv ziv. Adjective from circa 1662. Expressing or causing derision. Derisively is an adverb, and derisiveness is a noun. Next, also related. Beep, 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 beep. Derisory. Derisory or derisory. Adjective from 1618. One expressing derision and the synonym is derisive two worthy of derision so i guess if you should be scorned or ridiculed then uh then you are worthy of derision and you are derisory Uh, but especially for this one laughably small as in land could be bought for a derisory sum 
So uh, the land is so, so cheap, it's laughably small how much you could buy it for. So it is worthy of derision. You can laugh at that land, or at least the price of that land. That's derisory. Next. Derivable. Adjective from 1653. Capable of being derived. Wow, we had so many words in that. This, this, all this, this word, this world of deriding. Next, next, I think we're out of that world. Pew! Derivate. Derivate is next. Noun from 1660. The synonym is derivative. Derivative, and that is going to be the first word in the next episode. But we have one more word for this episode, which is also related. Derivation. D-E-R-I-V-A-T-I-O-N. Derivation. Noun from the 15th century. 1A1. The formation of a word from another word or base. And examples are the addition of a usually non-inflectional affix. Not entirely what that means. I can't really figure that out, but I'm sure it's very simple. But uh, yeah, so I think when we look at the etymology of a word and say, oh, this is from Latin or French or whatever, um, I think what you can say is that the English word is a derivation of that original word uh, from another word or the base like defenestration is from the Latin fenestra, which means window. And of course, defenestration means to throw out or go out a window. Uh, but I think, you know, there's a lot, anytime you just take a word and then you create another form of it. So, you know, if we look at, uh, if we look at derisive, there's derisively is an adverb and derisiveness as a noun. Are those derivations of derisive? Possibly, maybe, I think, not entirely sure. Go ask an English major. Okay, next is 1A2, an act of ascertaining or stating the derivation of a word. The act of ascertaining, so the creation of a derivation, or when you state the the derivation, that is also a derivation. 1A3, it is the number one definition for the word etymology and I definitely think that I'm going to need to get the guy who made Etym Online or some other person to be on that episode, Etymology. Yeah, it's, you know, the, the etymology is the going from one word, evolving to another word, maybe evolving to another word. They're derivations of each other. Um, 1B, that's what we're on. The relation of a word to its base. So how how is the original word and the new word, how are they related? That relation is a derivation. The same word means all these similar but different things. 2A, synonyms are source and origin. So I don't know if this is talking about words, probably not. So the original thing is a derivation. 2B, synonyms are descent and origination. So again, same idea, the or origination, where a thing came from. Three, something derived. Synonym is derivative. And uh, I'm just looking around derivative. So yeah, we're going to learn about that to, in tomorrow. But um, it's, uh, yeah, it's something that came from another thing, I think. Four, an act or process of deriving is a derivation. Five, this is the last one. A sequence of statements showing that a result is a necessary consequence of previously accepted statements. And an example of this sequence of statements is in logic or in mathematics. And then it shows that a result is a necessary consequence of previously accepted statements. So I guess with The reason it's a derivation is because of the previously accepted statements. Then this other thing can exist. Let's read again. A sequence of statements 
showing that a result is a necessary consequence of previously accepted statements. So yeah, because of this from in the past, and then because that's true, then these other things are true. Yeah, I think that kind of makes sense. Derivational is an adjective and possibly a derivation. Uh, There is no etymology for that because I think we are... Where are we going to get the etymology for this this word, the derivations of derivation. Um, hmm. I mean, it, I'm not seeing it for tomorrow. It, this one doesn't have it. Derivate doesn't have it. Interesting. Maybe there is no etymology for this. Oh, actually, no. I think we're going to see it a bit later in tomorrow's episode than I was expecting. Maybe. Hmm. All right. We have to end this episode right now. Okay, bye. No. The words that we had today were derate, derby, derbis, derbis, derealization, derecho, deregulation, derelict, derelict, dereliction, derepress, deride, derigur, derision, derisive, derisory, derivable, derivate, derivation. Uh, who? Oh, let's see. This one. This one's a little, little difficult. Uh, what? Nah, there wasn't really anything. I guess deregulation may might be the one that jumped out at me. I think it's. Yeah, see, it's a weird word because I. It you know, depending on the context, depending on what you believe politically, I think something should be deregulated. Something shouldn't be deregulated. They should be regulated. So I don't know. It's a. It's a. It's an interesting topic. Then I and I think that a lot of people have differing opinions on that. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just an interesting thing. So, maybe we'll pick deregulation as the word of the episode and we will just sing a very simple song where that goes Deregulation Deregulation That's it. That's the end of the song. That's the end of the episode. Uh, happy November. I said that before, but I said it again. Oh, it's you just you're going to have a lovely November, aren't you? That's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information to all of you. Bye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of the dictionary. This is the podcast. It's my podcast. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. Podcast people. Okay, the first word in this episode is derivative, derivative, D-E-R-I-V-A-T-I-V-E. Is this podcast derivative of anything else? Number, uh, this is the first form, noun from the 15th century, one is a word formed by derivation. And if you don't know what derivation is, go listen to the end of the previous episode so you can learn all about that. Two, for derivative. Something derived. Something derived from another thing. And yes, we will get to derive and derived here in this episode just before we start talking about skin. Number three, for derivative. The limit of of the ratio of the change in a function to the corresponding change in its independent variable as the latter change approaches zero. And that sure seems like math. I like math, but that's at a level that I'm not so sure what I'm talking about. 4a. A chemical substance related structurally to another substance and theoretically derivable from it okay so it's a chemical substance related so it's it's the structure of this chemical structure is related oh boy there's like it's like a lot of words and i miss i'm losing my place chemical substance related structurally to another substance so these two substances these chemical substances have a similar structure and this first substance could be derived from the second structure. I'm not a substance, sorry. I'm not entirely sure what sort of substance this might be or how one could be derived from the other one. Is this, maybe there's like a really complicated 
chemical thing, molecule, but then a smaller portion of it is also a molecule or vice versa. I don't know. Maybe 4B will help. A substance that can be made from another substance. So that's really all this is. It's a thing that can be turned into another thing, or the second thing comes from the first thing. I mean, that's all derived, derivative, derivation. That's all what this is about. Five. Oh, this is long. A contract or security that derives its value from that of an underlying asset as another security or from the value of a rate as of interest or currency exchange or index of asset value as of a stock index. So why don't we read this again without the parentheses? It will be much shorter and hopefully less complicated, but it's probably still going to be pretty complicated to you and I, or I and many of you. A contract or security that derives its value from that of an underlying asset or from the value of a rate or index of asset value. Nope, didn't help, still confused. But it's all about monies. Monies and monies and monies. Okay. We, we, we got to do a sound effect, and I think because we're going to talk about skin later this episode, we're going to do... I might be cheating using my hand on my face, but that's fine with me. The second form of derivative is an adjective from circa 1530. One, formed by derivation, as in a derivative word. A derivative word. The adjective derivative describes the word as derivative, and it is formed by derivation because it came from another word. Two, made up of or marked by derived elements. So it is made up by derived elements, or it is marked by derived elements. So it's just all take the elements, and then they get derived into another thing. Three, lacking originality. And the synonym is banal, but it looks like banal, but I think it's pronounced banal. It's not original, so uh, why is it lacking originality? Why is it called a derivative? Because if it's not original, that means that it basically has come from another thing. Uh, you know, original idea is an original idea. And if it's not original, you know, you're just taking it from other things. I think it is very hard to find original pieces of art just ever now. <laughs> Between music and movies and TV shows and just ideas and art and literature, everything. I just feel like it's all, it all comes down to a very few amount of things. Derivatively is an adverb and derivativeness is a noun. I may not be the smartest person or the funniest person, but I would like to think that this is not entirely a derivative podcast, other than the fact that there are lots and lots of other podcasts. The next word is derivatization. Derivatization, noun from 1967. The conversion of a chemical compound into a derivative. And uh, the example is as for identification. So you're converting a chemical compound into a derivative, another chemical compound probably. And uh, I guess you do that for identification purposes, and I don't really know why or how or who or what or where or when. Derivatize. Derivatize. That is a transitive verb. The next word is derive. This is the word that all these other words are coming from. This, the, all those other words, are derived from derive. This is a verb from the 14th century, 1a, to take, receive, or obtain, especially from a specified source. Again, same thing. Source, taking it, turning it into another thing, a thing taking it from the thing, the source. 1b, to obtain 
actually or theoretically from a parent substance. And this is back to the chemical substance talk. Number two, synonyms are infer and deduce. So infer or deduce. So it bas basically, if we're combining this with all the other things we've talked about here, if you, if you take some information, you can deduce or infer some sort of new piece of information. So that's why it's deriving. Information, doing some thinking, come up with some other information. Number three is archaic. The synonym is bring. Bring it over here. Derive it to me. Four, to trace the derivation of. So if you, if you want to follow the evolution of a word or a thing, uh, and then you are, you are deriving it. Intransitive, to have or take origin. Also, come as a derivative. Uh, there's a synonym for everything. It is the word spring. So like what? Spring forth? Spring is the transition between winter and summer. Summer has deduced that it needs to go through a temperature change. And I, I don't know. I'm just trying to combine all these things. Spring. Spring. Spring and bring. Bring is archaic, but spring is not. Deriver is a noun. We have finally gotten to the etymology for this whole section. Um, it is from Latin, deriware, which literally means to draw off, but more specifically, to draw off water. So you're taking water maybe from a well, maybe, I don't know, from a spring. Oh, a spring. Mm, see, a spring. Uh, so you're taking the water from a thing, and uh, that is from day plus rewus, or it looks like rivus, and that is stream. So, and then there's more at the word run. So that's so interesting. Like, I just, I sort of make a connection with draw off where you're taking a thing from another thing, from one thing to another thing. But uh, yeah, then it just became this whole big idea of chemicals and words and all this stuff. I think that is all. Oh, no, it's not. I'm sorry. I jumped the gun. Derived is the next word. Adjective from 1969. Being, possessing, or marked by a character not present in the ancestral form. And the example of this character is large brain in humans. Being possessing or marked by a character like large brains in humans, not present in the ancestral forms, as in derived features. So again, same idea. There's an older thing, and then it turns into another thing, kind of. And so, you know, the ancestral humans, be they early humans or other forms that are not technically humans, uh, Homo erectus, primates, whatever, um, they they evolved over the years, and eventually humans got bigger brains, and than the other ones, and so those those brains or those those uh those creatures are derived or the features are derived because they came from one and changed into another. I hope I described that okay, or you just stopped listening because you already knew it. The next word is the beginning of our, our skin section. Derm is an abbreviation for dermatologist or dermatology. And uh, yeah, we're definitely going to see those uh, soon. Soon, 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 soon. The next word is derm again. This one is a prefix. So it's derm or derma or dermo. Uh, there's no year, and it just means skin, as in the example, dermal, with an A-L at the end. And the etymology says this is from Greek, darin, well, before that even it was derma, and then darin, uh, which means to skin. Oh, it's a verb, to skin. How do you skin a thing? Are you talking about literally taking the skin off, putting the skin on? 
probably taking the skin off. And so, yeah, it's just, it's just skin. There's more at the word tear. So you probably have to tear the skin or cut it to, to take it off of a thing. The next word, it is the suffix derm. It's the end of the word, ends in derm. Like what? Okay, well, it still means skin. It also means covering, you know, and skin is a covering for your body, your bones, your muscles, your ves- blood vessels and nerves. Covers the whole thing, hopefully. Hopefully. There's an example. Ectoderm. E-C-T-O. Derm. What even is that? I've heard of ectoplasm and ecto-cooler and ecto-1. Is it... Hmm, I don't know. I'm excited to get to ecto and ectoderm. How many other ecto words are there? Next. Derma. It's another suffix. This one ends in an A. Um, It means skin or skin ailment of a type. Skin ailment of a type or just skin. And uh, to be more specific... It's skin ailment of a specified type. See, we got more specific and specified. As in the example, scleroderma. Something with the skin. It's an ailment of the skin that's in a in a sclero fashion. And I don't I don't remember what that is. Again, this is just from the Greek derma, which means skin, or as we learned, to skin. There are other, there are uh, uh, plural forms of this suffix, derma. There's dermas with an S at the end, or dermata. Dermata. More skin words. Derm abrasion is next. This is all one word. Noun from circa 1954. Surgical removal of skin blemishes or imperfections like scars or tattoos, by abrasion. And how are you doing this abrasion? Maybe with, oh, really? Sandpaper or wire brushes? Are you really using sandpaper or wire brushes to remove scars or tattoos? I don't know about that exactly. I mean, maybe some form, but I mean, I've heard of tattoos being removed by lasers and uh, scars probably by lasers also really sandpaper or wire brushes those are the examples you're giving me derm abrasion i don't know maybe maybe there's other things that i'm just not thinking of maybe it's different types of sandpaper or wire brushes i don't know i've never had to do something like this thankfully i'm very lucky the next word is dermal derm with an al adjective from circa 1803 one of or relating to skin, and especially to the dermis. I think that is, is that the upper layer, the top, the outside layer of the skin, or is that the epidermis? I think it's, I think it's the outside layer. There's a lot of layers. Maybe not. Um, The synonym for number one is cutaneous, which makes me think of the next level down. But number two, the synonym is epidermal. Epidermal and dermal are the same thing? That seems silly. More more information in the ease. Uh, next. This is another prefix. It is dermat. Dermat or dermato. Dermato. Uh, this also just means skin. It just means skin again. I don't know why. I don't know why we had to add the extra letters, but we did. There are a couple examples. Dermatitis or dermatology. So could we have made these words without the extra letters? Could they be derma... I mean, I guess it would probably be dermitis if we did that, but that maybe is not right. And then dermology... Maybe that just sounded weird to people, so they said, you know what, we need, this prefix needs some extra letters, like A-T or A-T-O, or something. That's what we did. 
It's just more ways to say skin. The next word. I just like smacking my face is all. The next word is, oh, dermatitis. This was the word in the example. Noun from 1876. The plural forms are derma, dermatitides? Or would it be dermatitides? No, it doesn't say dermatite. It says dermatitides. And the other form of plural is dermatitis? Dermatitises? It doesn't have a pronunciation for that, so I don't know exactly how to say it. It's spelled D-E-R-M-A-T-I-T-I-S-E-S. Dermatitises? Dermatitises. It's just inflammation of the skin. Y your, skin your skin is getting inflamed for some reason. I don't know why. What did you do? W where did you go? What's with this inflammation of the skin? You got, you got the dermatitis. I should have had a dermatologist on this episode. The next word. I may get some dermatitis on my cheek if I keep on smacking it. The next word is dermatoglyphics. Dermatoglyphics. D-E-R-M-A-T-O-G-L-Y-P-H-I-C-S. Noun from... 1926, 1. Skin patterns, especially patterns of the specialized skin of the inferior surfaces of the hands and feet. The what? Pa are you talking about the wrinkles in our hands? Are those the dermatoglyphics? Mm, maybe. And we also have, like, um, we got the fingerprints, so maybe that is also involved with the dermatoglyphics. Because, yeah, it's uh, patterns of the specialized skin. And, yes, that is specialized skin there, I think. Of the inferior surfaces. It's on the inside of the hands and feet. That must be it. Number two, the science of the study of skin patterns. And, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if people are studying scientifically the wrinkles, like where your fingers bend and, like, you know, when people do palm reading, there's the, all those lines. I don't know if there's much, much science behind that. But uh, definitely there's something with the fingerprints and how everybody's unique. And, you know, then you've got like koalas, I think, have very similar fingerprints to humans. Um, so, yeah, there's there's something going on there. I once had a discussion with somebody. If we are talking about the lines like the like the palm reading lines, I thought I said, what w were, were the lines? Do the lines designate how your fingers bend like when you're in utero when you're in the womb and you first close your hand is it already closed and that's why there are lines there or are the lines formed when you first close your hand and it's based on you know the physical structure of your hand your palm your fingers the bone lengths all that stuff and uh I, you know i don't know what the answer is i never really looked it up but uh you know it's everybody's different, and I don't think it probably means much, if anything. Oh, dermatoglyphic is an adjective. Uh, let's see, this is from dermat, that's the skin prefix, plus the Greek glyphine, which means to carve. Hmm, interesting. And there's more at the word cleave. Mm-hmm. It does kind of look like those palm lines have been carved out, kind of. We have one more word for this episode. It is dermatology. D-E-R-M-A-T-O-L-O-G-Y. Noun from 1819. A branch of medicine dealing with the skin, its structure, functions, and diseases. What, how did, how, what's the structure of the skin? How does it work? Does it have diseases? Is it inflamed? Does it have dermatitis? Are there moles? Are there cancer spots, tumors? Uh, are there are zits, blackheads? So many different things that, be, that can be going on with the skin. Is it dry? Is it sunburned? Is it not oily enough? Too oily? 
I don't even know all the things that can happen. You should go to the dermatologist regularly. I have not been in a little bit. Um, in fact, if you are especially of the younger age, um, this might seem kind of silly, but it probably is a good idea to make an actual map of all of the spots on your skin, unless you just have too many. But, you know, you could you could make little simple little pictures of like, okay, I got some dots over here, because then every year you can check and see if it's new. Like, I wouldn't necessarily know if a spot is new. You know, they say, oh, is this a new spot? I don't know. I see my skin, but I don't know. I don't haven't memorized all the dots on my body. There's enough of them that I don't know. But, you know, maybe you should pay more attention. Yeah, get yourself checked. Okay, I'm going to play dermatologist here. Please put on suntan lotion whenever you are going outside for a period of time. Uh, even just a little bit. And even if it's cloudy, you can still get uh, UV problems and radiation and maybe burned and all those things. And so, you know, be careful and don't be stupid. Dermatologic or dermatological, that is an adjective. And dermatologist is a noun. Go go check with the dermatologist. You know what? I think it's time to reread the word so we can pick a word of the episode. Wordy, wordy, word to word. Derivative, derivative, derivatization, derive, derived, derm, derm, derma, dermo, derm, derma, dermabrasion, dermal, dermat or dermato, Derm, I want to say like derm, 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 derm tomato, derm potato, dermato, dermato. You say dermato, I say dermato. Dermatitis, dermatoglyphics, or dermatoglyphics, and dermatology. Hmm. All right. I, you know, I was thinking about maybe just dermatology, but that might be just too big of a topic. So um, maybe. Maybe we'll get a little bit more specific and we will pick dermatoglyphics as the word of the episode because I just think that's an interesting thing to study, the, the th patterns on the skin. And maybe maybe, maybe people are studying non-human creatures with their hands and feet and what do their patterns of the skin have to tell them, if anything, I don't know. Dermatoglyphics, dermatoglyphics, study the patterns of the skin, dermatoglyphics. That's going to be the end of this episode. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, that's it. That's all I got for you for today. Okay, this has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. Thank you for turning on this podcast. I really, 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 really appreciate it. You know I do. And to show my appreciation, I will be talking about some more words and definitions today. Wow. How, why are you doing that? Um, if you love this podcast so much, more than even wanting to listen to it, I think you should, well, first of all, you should rate and review this, especially on Apple Podcasts. Give it the stars that you think it deserves, which I'm pretty sure is five. And then write about what you think about the show. Maybe write about your favorite word in whatever language you want. Or just a favorite. I don't know. Or least favorite. Just talk about something. And, uh, you know, subscribe to this on your preferred podcast platform and share it. You know, tweet about it. Instagram about it. TikTok about it do all those things, and then um, if you're on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, you can tag this show, at DictionaryPod. It's a little bit different on Facebook. You'll figure it out. You're a smarty pants. Um, and, uh, and then I do have a TikTok. It is at SpeedJampar, which you can use on other platforms, too. That's my personal stuff, in case you want to look at that. Nobody really wants to. What are the other things? Email, dictionarypod at gmail.com. This is all the stuff if you want to contact me in some way. Google voice number, call it, leave a message, say hi, maybe I'll put it in an episode in the future. 917-727-5757. Go support Tom and Jonah. They made the th two theme songs that I got going on right now. Go check out their music and all the great things that they do. If you want to put this show's a logo on a t-shirt or another thing that you can hold and touch and love and hug 
you can go buy some merchandising. The link is in the show notes. I think it's on Tee Public. Uh, okay, let's talk about the words in this very specific episode. The first one is dermatome. D-E-R-M-A-T-O-M-E. Noun from 1910. The lateral wall of a somite from which the dermis is produced. Not sure what a somite is. The dermis, I think that's the, that's the skin. It's produced in this somite in the wall that is on the lateral side. The wall. So the name of the wall is the ter- the dermatome. Hmm. Dermatomal is an adjective. The next word. I tried to do that sound before I started recording, and it sounded a whole lot better than it does now, but I'll I'll practice. The next word is a fun word. Dermatomyositis. Dermatomyositis. D-E-R-M-A-T-O-M-Y-O-S-I-T-I-S. Noun from circa 1899. An inflammatory disease of skin and muscle marked especially by muscular weakness and skin rash. So the the dermato part is the the skin. It's talking about the skin. The itis at the end is the inflammation. And the the, the myos, M-Y-O-S part, I don't know if that means muscle. Hmm, I feel like it should, but I'm not entirely sure. So, yeah, it's a problem with the skin and muscles. You know, they're pretty close together, so no surprise that there's something that can affect both of them. And the muscles are weak, and the skin has a rash. And so I hope the doctors know, and they're like, hey, you go to them and you say, hey, my skin has a rash on it, and I don't like it, and then my muscles are all weak. What do I got? And then the doctor says, well... You have dermatomyositis. That's all I got for that. Don't know how to fix it. Now they probably know. The next word. Dermatophyte. That is the next word. It ends in P-H-Y-T-E. Dermatophyte. Noun from 1882. No, it is not... A couple of clumps of skin fighting each other, but that would be fun to watch. It is a fungus parasitic on the skin or skin derivatives. <laughs> hey, that's a good way to bring in another word we had recently. Uh, so what what are skin derivatives? Well, they are hair or nails because they come from the skin. There might even technically be skin cells in them or made from skin cells but they are derivatives of skin so a fungus that is parasitic on the skin or hair or nails i'm not sure how you get this maybe maybe we should put a link in the show notes about dermatophytes to learn about how do you get this and what can you do about it maybe we should do the same thing for dermato dermatomyositis to learn about that more probably a good idea make you have you do a little less work if you want to learn about these things the next word i wonder how this fungus shows up but it's parasitic and that does not sound good i think you want to get rid of that right away the next word oh this is probably the worst one of the worst sound effects i've ever done it's all lip smacky and gross and it's supposed to be nice and punchy the next word is dermatosis Dermatosis, noun from 1864. I got the derma on my toesies. Dermatosis. It is a disease of the skin. Just any disease. I mean, maybe it's a very specific disease. But we did have dermatitis in the last episode, and that's just inflammation of the skin. Dermatosis is a disease of the skin, so maybe you get dermatitis from dermatosis, but I don't know if there are other things that are under the umbrella of dermatosis. That's a little bit better. 
The next word is a suffix, dermatis. I think that's how you would say it, dermatis, D-E-R-M-A-T-O-U-S. It means having a type of skin or having a specified type of skin, as in pachydermatis or pachydermatis. I think that's how you say it. That word starts with a P-A-C-H-Y, and I think that is talking about an elephant or an elephant's skin or the skin of an elephant. An elephant is pachydermatis because don't we call them pachyderms? Because they have a skin like what? Like pachy? I don't know what that prefix means, P-A-C-H-Y. Is it gray, wrinkled, tough, not sure? Hmm. That is not a word you come across a lot, pachyderm. I think that's how you spell it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, can't wait to learn about that one. The next word. I think we... Oh, no, we're not. Oh, definitely not. Uh, what's the sound effect? It is. The next word is dermestid. Dermestid. Noun from circa 1888. This one is fun. Any of a family of beetles with clubbed antennae that are very destructive to organic material of animal origin. And what types of animal origin? Dried meat, wool, or museum specimens. And the family name is Dermestidae. Dermestid is also an adjective. So why are they called this? They love to destroy organic material, um, probably eat it, because this is from the Greek word dermestes or dermestes, which is a leather-eating worm. But literally, literally it means skin eater. Yep, there's the derm. That's the skin part. They eat the skin. Because that is the that dermestes, dermestes, that is from derm plus edmoni. Hmm. Edmoni. And that means to eat. So yeah, eating the skin. These uh these beetles are very happy to eat the skin. Dermestids. Museums must have a whole whole group of people who who just gotta get rid of the dermestids. It's the dermestids crew. The Dermestid Cleanup Crew. The Dermestid Killers. The next word. It is just dermis. We got there. Dermis. Noun from circa 1830. The sensitive, vascular, inner, mesodermic layer of the skin. Called also corium, cutis. Those are the two options for also called. And it says to see the hair illustration. Now it doesn't, it does say inner mesodermic, so I wonder if that is the sublayer below the epidermis. I cannot remember which one is which. If I knew the prefix epi, then I would know what, which one was which. But anyway, you know, I think everything we said, that it's, it's sensitive. It's very sensitive, and it's vascular, which I think means that it probably has, like, the blood vessels and the nerves going through it, maybe. So, yeah, I think this all makes sense. The next word is the dermis again. This one's a suffix. It's layer of skin or tissue. That's the whole layer of skin or tissue, as in the example endodermis. So that's a specific layer of skin or tissue is the endodermis and maybe there's other kinds that have this suffix on it the next word dermoid cyst and i believe this might be the last of the skin words until of course we get to the word skin and maybe other things like that and hair i mean that's clearly related nails so dermoid cyst is two words Noun from 1872, a cystic tumor, often of the ovary, that contains skin and skin derivatives like hair or teeth. And this is called also just dermoid without cyst. So, 
This is interesting. Why does it contain skin or skin derivatives? Does it mean that it was it started to become a fetus, an embryo, and then it didn't? But it's in the ovary, so that seems kind of odd. I don't know if that's entirely possible. Or it's just a thing that your body's like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. Let's just do this. And then it's it's a problem. Um, I do know that uh, tumors in the ovaries are fairly common, I think. And so there's probably a bunch of other kinds too, not just this, I would assume. Next. Dern, Dern Ye Cree. I think that's how you say it. Dern Ye Cree. Two words. First word, D E R N I E R. Second word is C R I. Dern Ye Cree. Noun from 1896. The newest fashion is the Dernier Cree. Why is it the newest fashion? Because it is French, and it literally means last cry. Last cry. It's the last thing, the very last thing that has happened, so it's the newest thing, specifically fashion. Fashion. Um, hmm. I don't think I have ever worn anything that could be considered Dernier Cree. But of course, the French... And the people in Milan and New York and other places, they love the Dernier Cree. 1896. I wonder what the Dernier Cree was in 1896. Maybe we'll post a picture on social media if we can find something. Next is... Derogate. Derogate. Verb from the 15th century, starting with transitive... To cause, to seem inferior. To cause, to seem inferior. And the synonym is disparage. And I believe, I'm trying to, I'm just looking ahead. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get to another word that's related to this that is a little bit maybe more common. Um, Intransitive. Number one. To take away a part so as to impair. And the synonym is detract. I guess I would think of detract being like, uh, is it too close to distract? Distract, detract. If you detract something, you're sort of taking it off path maybe. Um, But this is to take away a part so as to impair. So if you take away my leg, you have derogated me because I am now impaired and I can't walk so great or quickly. Uh, Number two, to act beneath one's position or character. Hmm, maybe. Why Why are you going to do that? If you're at this position or character, why would you act beneath that? Unless you're trying to go down to somebody else's level. I don't know what context that might be. Derogation is a noun, and derogative is an adjective. That might be one that we hear a bit more commonly, derogative. Uh, that would maybe cause or seem inferior um yeah act below your character or your position the etymology says this is from the latin derogare which means to annul like to annul a law or detract from de plus rogare which means to ask or to propose a law and there's more at the word right r-i-g-h-t um, hmm, 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 yeah, my, my brain isn't quite uh, processing that and how to connect this, but maybe the next word will help a little bit, which is derogatory. And, you know, I, I, uh, I've heard this word a lot. I've probably used this word and maybe I never officially knew the definition, but I hope, hopefully I used it correctly. But now is the time that we will get to learn officially what derogatory means. Adjective from circa 1503, one, detracting from the character or standing of something, and this is often used with the words to, towards, or of. So derogatory to a thing, derogatory towards a thing, or derogatory of a thing. So detracting from the character or standing of something. So I think... Think if I can put my best brain 
foot forward. Uh, hmm, let's see. How do we describe this? Maybe there's a person who has some good character or uh, social standing, but then if you are derogatory to that person, then you are talking about the things that are maybe maybe even their lies. You're talking about the things that are not part of their good character, or you're saying lies that will detract from their character, that will make people think that they don't have a good character or good social standing. You're being derogatory to them. Number two, expressive of a low opinion, and the synonym is disparaging, as in derogatory remarks. It's all just low opinion. It's the bad things. Talking about how something is not good, maybe when it is good. Derogatorily is an adverb. I hoped, I hope that maybe that helped. I don't know. The next word, Derek. Derek, D-E-R-R-I-C-K, noun from circa 1752. Uh, and yes, Derek, first syllable is emphasized. One, a hoisting apparatus employing a tackle rigged at the end of a beam. So it raises things up and at the end of the the beam the pole there's a tackle there's a thing that i don't know what a tackle is exactly but that's that's a derrick number two a framework or tower over a deep drill hole like an oil well for supporting boring tackle or for hoisting and lowering and there is a picture of this type of derrick it just looks like a tower it's got the crissy cross bars and there's a couple of platforms so if, if you got to drill down, you need something that can physically make the drilling happen, raise it up and bring it down and, and do other things. But bores, it's a boring tackle. Oh, that tackle is so boring. Uh, so yeah, it's a derrick. It's uh yeah, it, it looks like a, like a TV tower, like a radio tower. Oh, speaking of, looks very similar to, um, to something. We just watched a movie called Fall. It's a recent horror movie where a couple of a couple of young women go climbing up a very tall tower and you can only assume what happens after that. But yes, it looks kind of similar to this one, but it is way way taller. Derek, it is from the obsolete word also Derek, which is hangman or gallows, which is from the name Derek with a capital D and only one R. That is the name of the 17th century English hangman. So, wow, this this hangman uh, put a lot of people to death, probably, and he got a whole thing named after him, a whole apparatus named after this guy, Derek. Uh, hey, Derek, <laughs> he, he probably he has no idea. Maybe he was such a good hangman. Like, we just got to call this thing. What We got to name this thing. What do we call it? Well, there's that really great hangman, over in that town over there in England, that uh, his name is Derek. We should just call it Derek. Maybe he invented the this uh, this type of gallows. Um, unless it's not a person, and the hangman is the structure that people would be hung from. It hoists them up, and maybe it has a tackle that's rigged at the end of the beam. I mean, you play the game Hangman. It's like a it's like an upside down L, a vertical piece, a horizontal piece. And so uh, that must be the Derek. And they call it Derek. Maybe it's literally from Derek. Derek the Hangman. Okay. We have one more word for this episode. It's, it's derriere. We, of course we had to get to derriere. D-E-R-R-I-E-R-E. -E you could also spell it the same way, but with an accent on the E, the middle E, the E that's the third letter from the end, and the accent goes, Pew! Derriere. Noun from 1774. The synonym is just the word buttocks. That's all it is. If you don't know what the buttocks are, that episode has already aired. Go back to the BU's 
and find out what the buttocks are. How can you not know what the buttocks are? Where do the buttocks start? This is from Old French derriere, which means back part or rear. From derriere spelled with one R in the middle, and that means behind. And uh, what else? From lower Latin derretro, which is from de, which means from, and retro, which means back. So from the back. Where's the back? The Where's the what's in the back? The derriere is in the back. It's coming from the back. Uh, it's a derriere. How, how, what else can we say about derriere? Get your derriere up and go do some something. I'm sitting on my derriere right now. Are there any songs with it? Well, we'll get to that in a second. The words that we had today were dermatome, dermatomyositis, dermatophyte, no, dermatophyte, dermatosis, dermatis, dermestid, dermis, dermis, dermoid cyst, dernier cree, dernier cree, derogate, derogatory, Derek and Derriere. Well, those last three words were pretty great, and it's very hard to pick one of them, but I think, you know, I just probably have to pick Derriere as the word of the episode. I mean, it is like the fanciest, most fanciest way to say your butt, your buttocks, your your rear, your ass, your, I mean, gluteus maximus is also a pretty fancy way to say your butt. But derriere, I think, maybe just kind of takes the cake. Anytime that you uh, that you uh, can say something in French, I personally feel quite fancy. But maybe French is your language and it doesn't sound fancy to you. Maybe English sounds fancy to you. Derriere. 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 That's a little song about my derriere. I'm not going to put any more words to the song because it's enough to say derriere. That is the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. It's also the end of page 336. That's the end of that page and that at this episode. And I hope you're doing very well. This has been Spencer Dispensing. Information still. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. Top of page 337 is where we are at. This is the podcast where I am your host. I would like to read these words and definitions to you. My name is Spencer. How are you doing? Hello. Great to have you. And I just read a short little section of a page, and then I talk about the things that I read while I read them, and then sometimes there's guests, and it's a lot of fun. In fact... I uh, I just scheduled a guest to be on relatively soon. Uh, I don't know. Their episode will probably air in December. And then I'm going to schedule maybe two more guests. But you might hear them before the end of the 2022 year. So that's that's a lot of guests coming up. The first word in this episode is daring do. Daring do. That's it. D E R R I N G hyphen do daring do you know this does sound like a maybe scottish word let's find out noun from 1579 it doesn't say anything about scottish i feel very bad now daring action that is what it means daring action the synonym is just daring and the example is deeds of daring do what what is this phrase? It is from Middle English during dawn, which means daring to do from during, which is from the verb doren, which means to dare. So yeah, that makes sense. Dare and then don, which means to do. That all makes perfect sense. So it's a it's a it's a daring thing to do. It's a daring action. In Die Hard. He did a lot of daring do's. Where do people use this? Do people still use this? It does sound like a very much like a phrase that you'd hear in in the UK somewhere. Uh, But hey, maybe 
if I if I go for a jog, for me that would be a daring do. Uh, sometimes just standing up is a daring do. Sound effect time, which says that word's over. Here comes the next word. Zippity whoop. Derringer is the next word with a G E R at the end. Derringer. Noun from 1853. It is a short barreled pocket pistol. A short barreled pocket pistol. This is from Henry Derringer. Interesting, though. His name is spelled with one R in the middle, and this word, Derringer, has two R's. I wonder why that happened. Henry Derringer was an American inventor and died in 1869. I don't know why they don't have the years, birth year and death year. Why do you just say they died in this year? I don't understand. But Henry Derringer made at least one thing, a short-barreled pocket pistol, but he probably made other things. Zippy-dippy-doop-boop. The next word is Deris. D-E-R-R-I-S. Noun from 1919. One. A preparation chiefly of ground Deris roots used as an insecticide. Uh, well, I think this number two definition is probably going to be the Deris roots. So you take these roots and you mix them all up with, you ground them up and maybe put other stuff with them and then you can use it as an insecticide so the insects don't bite you because maybe in wherever this stuff grows, uh, they got some really bad insects and you could maybe get some diseases. Number two, any of a large genus of tropical Eurasian shrubs and woody vines of the legume family, including sources of poisons and especially commercial sources of rotenone. Well, it didn't say that it's a root, shrub, and a vine, but maybe, I mean, both of those have roots, so maybe the, those roots are taken for the insecticide, and it's, but it's part of the legume family, so I wonder if it grows legumes, but then it's got poison in it, and whatever rotenone is. Um, okay, so this is from the genus name, which is just Deris, which is from the Greek, um, and I'm looking back previously in all the skin words, because it says it's from the Greek, which means skin, and I was just, oh, is it daring? Is that what it is? D-E-R-E-I-N? Oh, come on, where, where is the, where is that actual information so I can give you the correct stuff. Uh, Greek, yeah, daring is to skin. That's the verb. So, yep, that makes sense. Um, and then there's more of the word tear. Yeah, it's the same thing. So, uh, what, how, how did they make, how, why did they name this after skin? Do we need to post a picture of this stuff? Do we need to put a link in the show notes that says something about the skin? Does it look like skin? Maybe it's poisonous to the skin. I have no idea. Z do. The next word is dervish. D E R V I S H. Noun from 1585. 1. A member of a Muslim religious order noted for devotional exercises. Examples of those are bodily movements leading to a trance. I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, and yeah, I think we'll have to put uh, put a link for, for more notes. No, put a link in the show notes for more information. And here's some more information. Number two, one that whirls or dances with or as if with the abandonment of a dervish. And I have heard of the whirling dervishes or whirling dervish, and I never quite fully understood what that was had maybe a little bit of an idea, but not as much as I do now. So, if you're not a dervish, but you whirl or dance around with no abandon, you just don't care, like nobody's watching. I did that once. I danced with my eyes closed, and I had no idea if there was literally any anybody in the room or if anybody was watching. So I guess I, was, I wasn't whirling around, I was just dancing real weird. 
But uh, so I guess you could call me a dervish in that context. But I am really fascinated. So Muslim religious order, they, they're noted for devotional exercise. So they probably spin around a lot because that's whirls. That's, that's how I think of a whirl. And uh, maybe then they get into a trance because they're dizzy. This is from the Turkish dervis, which literally means beggar. I wonder why. Maybe they used to be beggars. Maybe they would dance as they were begging for money and food. Um, and then it's from the Persian dervish. So, yeah, got to put more information in the show notes to learn more about the dervishes, the whirling dervishes, although I don't think that they necessarily say that about themselves. I'm not sure. Des is, oh, that was the last D-E-R word. What a thing to celebrate. Next is the D-E-S section, which probably will go on. Ooh, yeah, that's going to go on for a little while. At least eight or so pages. So this is a prefix. And uh, it just takes us to the number six definition for the DE prefix. Should we see if we can find that real fast? Um, we're going to have to go back a ways because, you know, there's a lot of DE words. And we got to go all the way to the beginning of the DE words, which, oop, I think I went a page too far. Uh, DE number six, having a molecule characterized by the removal of one or more atoms of a specified element. So that's also des. And it says especially before vowels. So if this is going before a word that has a vowel like oxy, then you put in the S so you're not going from vowel to vowel. Because there's an example, desoxy, desoxy. Next word, zazazuzuzu, D-E-S, all caps, noun from 1970. And the synonym is, let's see if I can say this, diethyl stilbestrol, diethyl stilbestrol. Let's have fun with that one later. Next word, desacralize or desacralize. Transitive verb from 1911 to divest of sacred qualities or status. A thing has some sacred qualities or status, but we're going to say, nope, no more. Desacralize it or desacralize it. Let's put it through a process of desacralization or desacralization. That's a noun. I wonder how often this happens. When, when do you have to take a thing that's sacred and make it unsacred. The next word, desalinate or desalinate, transitive verb from 1949, and the synonym is just desalt, which is coming up real quick. Uh, desalination or salination is a noun. Desalinator or salinator is also a noun. Yeah. Getting rid of the salt in a thing, because sometimes you got to do that for various reasons. Next, similar. Uh, what's my sound effect? Z, 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 zoo. Desalinize or desalinize. Transitive verb from 1934. The synonym again is desalt. And desalinization or salinization is a noun. So we had salinate and salinize. And here is the real word. Those were fake words. This is the real wor word. Z, 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 U. Desalt. A transitive verb from 1904. You probably already know this, but it means to remove salt from. And desalter is a noun. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I think... Um especially on the on the oceans to process the water for like drinking water and stuff they got to desalinate it cuz you can't drink water with salt in it please don't do that you will get sick and possibly die depending on how much you have you might throw up our body can't handle that much salt you need salt but not that much salt so yeah you got to desalt it although i think we we always hear it in a like like desalinate and not so much desalt 
if you don't like the salt and you got a saltine, a cracker, and you wanna, you don't want so much salt, you just brush off the salt into the, into the, the garbage bin or the sink or my mouth, and that is a, a desalting. The next word, zebedoop boop, desanctify, transitive verb from 1956, and the synonym is of another word we already had, desacralize or desacralize. Desanctification is a noun. So it's the same thing. Desacralize, desanctify. Next word. Descant. Yeah, descant. D E S C A N T. First form. You could also spell it and pronounce it discant. Discant. This can't do that. That does that. This is a noun from the 14th century. 1A, a melody or counterpoint sung above the plain song of the tenor. The tenor is singing a song. La, 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 la. And then the descant or the discant is. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. 1B, the art of composing or improvising contrapuntal part music. So that's music with point and counterpoint. And then also, the music so composed or improvised. Oh, dis, discant, it's an art of composing, improvising music. And then what you are making is also the discant. It's all about point and counterpoint, two things going on at once that are complementary but different. They're similar but different they they they're in the same key they harmonize but they're kind of their own things and they still they sound good alone and they sound even better together one c the synonyms are soprano and treble one d a superimposed counterpoint to a simple melody sung typically by some or all of the sopranos Two, discourse or comment on a theme. What sort of theme are we talking about here? A theme, like an essay, a theme of a musical theme probably, but if you're talking about it, then that is the descant. This is from Latin, uh, Middle Latin discantus, which is from the Latin dis prefix, plus the next word, contus, which means song, and there's more at the word chant. So, dis. I guess maybe we'll learn more when we get to the D-I-S prefix, but basically, it's a song that's something else is going on with it. Uh, next word. Zilululululup. Descant, second form. You can also emphasize the second syllable, so it's Descant or discant. Des or dis again. Uh, Intransitive verb from the 15th century. One, to sing or play a descant. But then broadly, the synonym is sing. Number two, synonyms are comment and discourse. So... Okay, so yes, this was the verb form, and the previous one was the noun. So you're descanting a descant, or you're descanting a descant. I'm not going to go through all the different possible variations because there's like a bunch of them. I think we are on the last word, which is zilililipapu, descend, D E S C. E N D descend into madness is what this podcast is doing. Verb from the 13th century, starting with intransitive, and we have a bunch of them. A whole, a holy lot. Number one, to pass from a higher place or level to a lower one, as in descended from the platform. That 
is an interesting movie, the platform Spanish movie about a prison where the people at the top get a lot of food and then the platform goes down and there's less and less food. It's kind of disgusting, but it's pretty interesting. Number two, to pass in discussion from what is logically prior or more comprehensive. To pass in discussion. What do you, I don't what do you mean by that? To pass in discussion from what is logically prior or more comprehensive. 3A to originate or come from an ancestral stock or source. And the synonym is derive as in descends from an old merchant family. We all descend from something somewhere someplace sometime you can't you can't just come out of nowhere we're all descendants of well just life possibly you know whatever the first thing that was living even something that's we don't think of as living like uh, uh plants or trees or those cyanobacteria we are all from that stuff whatever the first living thing is we are all descending descendants of that we have descended Descendant is going to be in the next episode. Sorry for jumping ahead. 3B, to pass by inheritance, as in a desk that has descended in the family. It's an heirloom. It must be a really lovely desk if it has descended through the family. Somebody gets it, they die, they give it to somebody else. They die, they give it to somebody else. They die, they give it to somebody else. How many generations? Um... I think we must have a few heirlooms in our family like this, but I think that at most they've probably gone like through four generations or something. Um, That was 3B. Here is 3C. To pass by transmission, as in songs descended from old ballads. So, hmm. What old ballads and then what you make a new version of the song i don't know any examples like that four to incline lead or extend downward as in the road descends to the river it just keeps on going down that's the whole thing about this word it's all about going down mm, we we were driving through a mountain mountainous region recently and there was a lot of ups and downs. And we were in this tiny little car that I was worried wasn't going to make it, but it did do it. And uh, yeah, a lot of hairpin turns and things. Had to be real careful. And then it started raining, so that made it even harder. 5A, to swoop or pounce down as in a sudden attack. To swoop or pounce down. Yeah, like, a, like an owl descending on an unsuspecting mouse. 5B, to appear suddenly and often disconcertingly as if from above. <laughs> All of a sudden, oh, there's an example. Reporters descended on the candidate. All of a sudden, there were reporters, and maybe the reporter didn't really want the, or sorry, the candidate didn't really want them there. That's why they were, it was disconcertingly, and uh, it, it felt like they came from above which is why this is descend. Six, to proceed in a sequence or gradation from higher to lower or from more remote to nearer or more recent. To proceed in a sequence of... Gra I don't know what we're talking about here. Is this a math sequence? Gradation from higher to lower, more remote to nearer. I mean, those physically make sense in my mind. Or more recent... Just need a little bit more context, please. 7a, to lower oneself in status or dignity. Synonym is stoop. So if you're talking to somebody who maybe is acting more immature or who's physically lower or, you know, whatever, you got you to gotta maybe stoop to their level, descend to their level. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of examples. 7b. To worsen and sink in condition or estimation. Here is transitive. There's just two of them. One, to pass, move, 
or climb down or down along. So it could be stairs, it could be a ladder, it could be just a wall going down a thing. Number two, to extend down along. Descendable is an adjective. Just a thing that can go down or something can go down on it. Like a road is descendable. Um, this is from the Latin descendere, which is from de plus scandere, which means to climb. So you put the D-E in front of it, and it just is to climb down, probably. There's more at the word scan. Interesting. Scan. I wonder what definitions are going to be in the word scan that I can't even think of. All right. That's it. Those were all the words. So a quick reread of them sounds like this. Daring do. Derringer. Daris. Dervish. Des. D-E-S, desacralize, desalinate, desalinize, desalt, desanctify, descant, descant, descend. Ooh, okay. I think, I was thinking about daring do. I just like the sound of it, and it's a daring action. hoo I've done a daring action, a daring do. But I think I'm going to pick dervish because I'm just... Highly fascinated about what do they do exactly? Is it is it dancing? Is it actually exercise? It says it is. Yeah, I think it's just uh, sounds sounds uh, interesting. So, uh, a song about dervish. Dervish, 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 dervish. I don't know. Sort of a. Uh, I was doing a little head motion, which you can't see. Maybe someday you'll be able to see my head while I do this. That was it. That was it. Uh, TV show I can recommend if you like the creepy stuff. The Midnight Club on the Netflix is very good. We watched another episode last night. Can't wait to watch the rest of it. Uh, especially if you've read the Christopher Bike Pike books, which I have not. But uh, they're based on that. That is the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. That's it. That's the intro. Let's get into the words. The first word is descendant. D-E-S-C-E-N-D-A-N-T or D-E-N-T. Adjective from... Circa 1555. One, moving or directed downward. Two, proceeding from an ancestor or source. And uh, yeah, the etymology is probably pretty similar to what we had at the end of the previous episode because we're just, this is a derivative of that one. Descendant comes from a thing before sound effect today shall be wow second form of descendant spelled both ways noun from 1600 one one descended from another or from a common stock two one deriving directly from a precursor or prototype uh yeah i, I talked a bit about uh, just being descended from a thing and all the stuff and uh, most people probably only know back maybe uh, two or three uh, generations of their ancestors. They don't know a whole lot of who the people are that they descended from. Who are the people you've descended from? You've descended from. Um, I. That's mostly what I know. I know maybe a bit more than the average person just because uh, I've... I've um, why? I don't know. Because I've actually known some of the people in person and they had some memory to talk about people before. Uh, but then I've also done some research and found that, you know, I, I know I know I'm a descendant of some some people from many, many years ago. And just like you. In fact, we could be related. The next word. Wow. Descender. Uh, and you could also pronounce it descender with the emphasis on the d descender 
descender, noun from 1802. The part of a lowercase letter, like the, the letter P, that descends below the main body of the letter, also a letter that has such a part. So the letter P is called a descender, but then the part of the P, that line that goes below the roundy part, is also called the descender because it goes below the main the main part of the letter. And we must have talked about this in the A's, but there are letters like B or D that are ascenders because they have a part that goes above the main body of the letter. Wow. Next word is dissension. Noun from the 15th century. It is archaic. And it's uh, the number two definition for descent, which is actually our next word. Wow! Descent. D-E-S-C-E-N-T. Noun from the 14th century. 1A. Derivation from an ancestor. Synonyms are birth and lineage. You are a descendant. You have been. It's a descent from somebody else um like the example of french descent i know that i am of many descents from from england i have of i have england descent i'm of english descent also um well i don't even know what it was at the time but uh ukraine i actually am a little bit of ukraine descent which, who knows what Ukraine even is anymore? That's a whole big question, but it is Ukraine right now. Or at least most of it is. 1B. Transmission or devolution or devolution of an estate by inheritance, usually in the descending line. So yeah, again, I think this is about uh, somebody passing along things through inheritance. Again, somebody dies, give it to somebody else. Somebody dies, somebody give it to... Blah, 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 blah. 1C. The fact or process of originating from an ancestral stock. The fact or process. 1D. The shaping or development in nature and character by transmission from a source. Synonym is derivation. One thing shapes or develops into another thing. Number two, the act or process of descending. Like if, if I'm going down some stairs, I'm on a descent. Three, a step downward in a scale of gradation. Specifically, one generation in an ancestral line or genealogical scale. One step downward. So from my parents to me, that is uh, a step of descent. 4A, an inclination downward. It's kind of funny to put those two words together, inclination downward. I think of inclination as going up, but it's just it's just a, a slant. It's not straight across. It's not up and down. It's, it's leaning in one direction, and depending on what way you go on it, it's either downward or upward. The synonym is slope. For B, a descending way as a downgrade or stairway. For, I don't know what I said, for B, that was for B. For C is obsolete. The lowest part, maybe the lowest step, is the descent. 5A, synonyms are attack and invasion. Descent, yeah, like you're descending on them. Uh, where did we have that? Uh, descending appears appear suddenly and often disconcertingly as if from above. Or maybe it's an attack and invasion from planes or parachuters or birds, pterodactyls. 5B, a sudden disconcerting appearance as for a visit. Uh, the, my, the first thing I thought of when I saw that as for a visit was in the, the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Uh, they, they knew it was coming, 
But when the grandparents arrive at the house, that feels like a descent. They have descended on the house and they ring the doorbell and everybody freezes and it goes ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. And then it's all crazy. Number six, a downward step, as in station or value, synonym is decline, as in descent of the family to actual poverty. That's a, yeah, uh, your, your, your class, that's a, there's a gradation, there's steps there. Upper, upper class, middle, upper class, lower, upper class, upper, middle class, you know, we could go on for a while on that. Um, okay, synonym, etymology, not much there. Let's move on to, wow, descramble, transitive verb from 1957. It's the number two definition for unscramble, descramble, unscramble, and descrambler is a noun. I wonder which one gets used more. I mean, maybe it's unscramble because that's the one with the actual definition, but I don't know. I would think maybe descramble also. What you got to descramble the codes? Wow. Describe is next. Transitive verb. I think it's only transitive from the 15th century. One, to represent or give an account of in words. Let's try that one again. To represent or give an account of in words. So if I'm describing to you something in words like describe a picture, I'm describing it. If I tell you verbally what it thing looks like, like maybe I'm describing it to a blind person, a person who cannot see, they would like to know what I'm seeing maybe or what a thing might look like. What is everybody reacting to? Well, let me describe it to you. Two. To represent by a figure, model, or picture. Synonym is delineate. Three is obsolete. Synonym is distribute. Distribute. Hmm. Distributing things to the people. Describing. Yeah, that is a little odd to my brain. Four. To trace or traverse the outline of. As in, describe a circle. And, uh, yeah, we're going to get to the etymology in a minute. Um, To trace or... So if you're literally drawing a thing, or uh, if if there's a a thing underneath a piece of paper, like tracing paper, and then you draw it, you are describing it. And, yes, the etymology will come into play here in a minute. Number five is archaic. Synonyms are observe and perceive. Describable is an adjective. Can it be described? I don't know. Let's try. That's what I try to do in this podcast. I try to describe things to you. Describer. I am a describer. That's a noun. So the etymology is from describere. That's the Latin verb, which is de plus scribere, which means to write. And there's more at the word scribe. Someone who writes. So yes, when you have a pencil or a pen or some or some other writing utensil in your hand and you're tracing a thing and making a circle, you're describing it. Wow. Description is next. Noun from the 14th century, 1A, an act of describing specifically. Discourse intended to give a mental image of something experienced. It's the description. I don't think I'm going to really describe these a whole lot more because I, th- I think these are fairly obvious to most people. Also with the definition. 1B, a descriptive statement or account is a description. It's very descriptive. It has been described, that description. 2, kind or character, especially as determined by salient features, as in, opposed to do tax of so radical a description. Well, I don't even know what that meant. Opposed to any tax. Maybe I read that wrong. 
opposed to any tax of so radical a description. We don't want to have a tax that's so radical. A synonym is the word type for all of it. The next word. Wow. Oh, this is our last word. Descriptive. D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T-I-V-E. Descriptive. Adjective from 1723. And we are going to have one more word in this world in tomorrow's episode. One. Serving to describe. As in, a descriptive account. It serves to describe. 2A. Referring to, constituting, or grounded in matters of observation or experience. As in, the descriptive basis of science. The basis of science is very descriptive. It refers to, it constitutes, it's grounded in matters of observation or experience. Yes, that is literally what science is all about. You have to observe, take Take notes, get the data, the data, and then, and then you go on from there. To be factually grounded or informative rather than normative, prescriptive, or emotive, as in descriptive cultural studies. So this is all about facts and information opposed to things that are more um, oh, that are less, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this. Um, it's more about facts and less about feelings. You know, does that make sense? Yeah. Number three is talking about a modifier. 3A is expressing the quality, kind, or condition of what is denoted by the modified term, as in the word hot in hot water, is a descriptive adjective. It really does a good job at describing what that water is like. 3b, the synonym is non-restrictive, and I think that is still talking about a modifier. 4. Of relating to or dealing with the structure of a language at a particular time, usually with exclusion of historical and comparative data, as in descriptive linguistics. Of relating to or dealing with the structure of a language at a particular time. So what is that language like at that certain time? What was English like during the Middle English time? Uh, Usually with exclusion of historical and comparative data. So it's just about the language and not about what else was going on. Descriptively, is an adverb, and descriptiveness is a noun. I think I need to pick a word of the episode. The words that we had today were descendant, descendant, descender, dissension, descent, descramble, describe, description, descriptive. I did like descramble, but I think I might pick describe as the word of the episode, because I, uh, I I like to describe things in a very clear and vivid way to make sure that people understand what I'm talking about, or maybe if two people are talking and they're having trouble communicating, I may have to help describe something in a different way so somebody else can understand it, or something like that. Describe! describe let's all describe what we want to okay i don't know what we're describing that is going to be the end of this episode thank you very much for listening and until next time this is spencer dispensing information goodbye hello word nerds welcome to another episode of the dictionary it is the podcast that is coming at you every single day All the days, all the days until I get to the end of the letter D, and then I will probably take another short break, and then they're going to come back again to you every single day. And that's the pattern that we're going to do until this book is done. The first word in this episode is descriptor. D-E-S-C-R-I 
P-T-O-R. Noun from 1933. Something, as a word or characteristic feature, that serves to describe or identify, especially a word or phrase as an index term used to identify an item as a subject or document in an information retrieval system. Wow, there was a whole lot of additional information. So the definition is just something that serves to describe or identify. It's a descriptor. It describes or identifies something else. But more specifically, a word or phrase used to identify an item in an information retrieval system. Like, so that's probably like a computer program. You put in the information and it retrieves the information that you're looking for. And yep, you describe what you want. That's it for that word. What's the sound effect going to be? It's going to be... Yeah. The next word is descry. D-E-S-C-R-Y. Descry. First form, transitive verb from the 14th century, 1A, to catch sight of, as in, I described a sail. And that is from Jonathan Swift. I think Jonathan, Mr. Swift wrote some books or something, and there's probably one that's real obvious that I can't think of right now. But uh, whatever in the story, in the book, whatever it is, he described a sail. He saw a sail. He caught sight of a sail. I will have to probably put in the show notes what what book that's from, because it's got to be something that I've heard of. 1B synonyms are find out and discover. I often descry new words when I read this book and do this podcast, because I, I discover a lot of new words. Number two is obsolete, to make known, and the synonym is reveal. It has been revealed. The etymology says it is from Middle English, descorien, which means to proclaim or reveal. From, let's see, eh, yeah, that's kind of the rest of it. Anglo-French, Old French. There's more at decry, D-E-C-R-Y. So they just put a put an S in the middle or took the S out. I'm not sure which way it went. Uh, that's that for that, that. Yeah. Second form of descry, noun from 1605. This is also obsolete. And it is discovery or view from afar. Well, that doesn't seem very obsolete. Or may, Oh, it's the noun version of it. That's the one that's obsolete. So the thing that you see from afar would be called the descry. I think that's what that means. And yeah, now we just use it as a verb. Oh, I descry that thing over there. Yeah. The next word is Desdemona with a capital D. Noun from circa 1605. The wife of Othello in Shakespeare's Othello. I is I guess okay. Are we put, we're putting Shakespeare Shakespearean characters in the dictionary, so I assume we'll come across Othello and Iago and how many other characters are we going to come across? I don't really understand why we would put Shakespeare characters in here, but I guess sometimes people mm, maybe somebody could be called a Desdemona for some reason. I don't really know. But, uh, yeah, Wife of Othello in Shakespeare's Hamlet. No, it's Shakespeare's Othello. Yeah! The next word is desecrate. This is a transitive verb from 1675. I think this is probably going to be similar to, what did we have? Desanctify, desacralize. This is desecrate. One to violate the sanctity of, and the synonym is profane, as in, desecrate a shrine. 
what would you have to do to desecrate a shrine? First of all, don't go desecrating sh a shrine or anything. If somebody put a thing together that they uh, that they like that's sacred to them, just uh, leave it be. Uh, but yeah, don't. Uh, you could. You, you know what? I'm not even going to tell you what you could do because then I might give you ideas, like you can't think of ones on your own. Number two, to treat disrespectfully, irreverently, or outrageously, as in the kind of shore development that has desecrated so many waterfronts. And that is a quote from John Fisher. Yeah, that's. I think the waterfronts, nature in general, is sacred. And uh, it, it off, a lot of them have been desecrated by condo buildings and big stuff like that just because people want that that view for themselves but maybe we should leave it leave it nice and clean and naturey so we can all enjoy it desecrator with an e or an o that is a noun a desecrator so like the, the moon is filled with craters and if you fill it in you're a desecrator this is from uh, there's nothing. There's nothing that I can tell you about the etymology. Next. Yep. Desecration. Noun from circa 1717. Now, wait. Desecrate was 1675. That's a pretty good distance later to come up with desecration. An act or instance of desecrating or the state of being desecrated. Yeah desegregate is next this is a verb from 1944 starting with transitive to eliminate segregation in that's just the whole definition but specifically to free of any law provision or practice requiring isolation of the members of a particular race in separate units mm-hmm this I did not grow up in the the 40s the 50s or before or even a little bit after that so this is not something that I have seen specifically oh no I should say I live in a time of desegregation but I did not have to live through going through that process of desegregation or what segregation was like before that but I have definitely seen pictures and videos and heard stories and all that stuff and I just I'm not surprised, but I can't believe that we ever had a world like that. And I'm, I mean, you know, that's just what it was like. But from my viewpoint and modern viewpoints, it's just, it's just amazing that things were like that. And, uh, and just really fucking terrible. Intransitive. To become desegregated. Uh, whew, yeah, I mean... I think I think I may have to put a, a link in the show notes to talk more about this. And, you know, we, we automatically think of the South in the United States and having bathrooms and restaurants and whole whole cities, city blocks, neighborhoods, water fountains, all those things, schools. The list goes on and on about how things were segregated. And it's just so good that we got past that but we still i think have a lot of hurdles to cross uh but yes we've made a lot of strides the next word yeah desegregation noun from 1935 one the state of being desegregated Things were segregated, separate. People living away from each other or doing things separate because why? There's no good reason. And then they're in a state of desegregation where they're all, all put back together again. Number two, the action or an instance of desegregating. And I'm just going to say that there's a very good chance that I'm probably going to pick one of these words as the word of the episode because I'm just really glad that we... We, we were able to do this. Are there are there places still? There must be. There must be places still in the, this country or other countries that are segregated in some form, either class or race or whatever. And um, yeah, yeah. Maybe we can find out the state of desegregation in the, the, in the world. 
Yep. 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 The next word is deselect. This is a transitive verb from 1965. One synonyms are dismiss and reject. Two, to cause something previously selected to no longer be selected in a software interface. To cause to no, to no longer be selected in a software interface. As in, deselect the songs you don't want to hear. Mm, okay, yeah. We, there's so many... I'm not going to give you other things of what can be deselected in a software interface. Sometimes you have to select things, and then you change your mind, and you have to deselect things. Um, that's it. That's that's deselect. I'm going to deselect that. I don't know. My brain's tired. Yeah. Desensitize is the next word. This is a transitive verb from 1898. One, to make insensitive or non-reactive to a sensitizing agent. And the example of what you are making is a sensitized or hypersensitive individual. I definitely think I am, in certain contexts, a hypersensitive individual. So what can we do to make me less sensitive or non-reactive to a sensitizing agent? A thing sets off my sensitivity. Yeah. And we're all sensitive in certain ways, aren't we? I've always been one of those kids. I'm still a kid. Shut up. Number two, to make emotionally insensitive or callous. Specifically, to extinguish an emotional response. Extinguish an emotional response. And we do, we do need emotions, though. You don't want to... Oh, there's more. There's more to the sentence. To extinguish an emotional response to stimuli that formerly induced it. So a thing used to give you an emotional response like fear, anxiety, or guilt. But then if you are desensitized, uh, you are now uh, maybe callous to that response, to the thing that caused that response. And then you don't react with fear, anxiety, or guilt. I'm working on it. Desensitization is a noun. And desensitizer is a noun. And I realize, I said I'm working on it, but to a certain extent, I don't want to be totally callous to emotions. It's, it depends on the thing, depends on the context. You're probably like this too. Yep, you. Yes. The next word is the last word. It's pronounced either desert or dessert, depending on which which form we're talking about we have four of them but only three of them are in this episode and you gotta wait until the next episode to hear the fourth form first form this one is pronounced desert d-e-s-e-r-t noun from the 13th century a lot of people have trouble between this word and the other word that is sometimes sounds the same which has two s's it's a great word that's not this word. This one, 1A, arid land with usually sparse vegetation, especially such land having a very warm climate and receiving less than 25 centimeters or 10 inches of sporadic rainfall annually. I've heard that the biggest thing that makes something be called desert is that it's dry. It's, it's the lack of water. 25 centimeters or 10 inches of rainfall in a whole year is not a lot. And I think a lot of them probably have less than that. Um, Antarctica, I believe, is considered a desert because it doesn't actually get a lot of uh, rainfall. You'd think that, oh, but there's like snow and water on the ground. Yeah, but it doesn't usually fall from the sky very much. So it's technically dry. And uh, yeah, that's what I've heard. A lot of the deserts are um, they're they're near they're near the equator. They're on the equator, maybe, or just north or just south of the equator, because that's where it tends to be warmer and drier for certain things. If you look at a map, you look at a globe, 
a roundy. You look at a flat map. There's like a stripe of of brown, uh, right right around all 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 along the world. There's this big area that's has a lot of deserts. What are we on one B? An area of water, apparently devoid of life. An area of water. What sort of water is this? It's devoid of life. That's called a desert. Hmm. It's a bit of a different definition than a dry piece of land. Number two is archaic. A wild, uninhabited, and uncultivated tract. I guess people used to call that a desert. Three. A desolate or forbidden, no, forbidding area. As in, lost in a desert of doubt. It's it's just all all the doubt. There's nothing. You don't want to be there. It's a desert. Desertic. Desertic is an adjective. And desert-like is also an adjective. I, I don't think I've ever heard anything be described as desertic. That makes me think of sweets. Desserts. This is from... Let's see, the Latin verb deserere, which means to desert, like to leave, which is from de, plus serere, which means to join together. And there's more of the word series. Hmm. So a series, like a TV series, is a number of episodes joined together to make one thing. We call it a season. Um... But so, so serere is joined together, but then de serere is to desert. They have separated from each other. They are des- all the series, all the episodes are deserting each other. And so I guess when you, have, when you think about a, a big desert of sand, it has been deserted f- from all the, the living things in the water has deserted it. It says, sorry, we got to go other places Uh, We're just going to leave you with dry land. The next word. Yeah. Second form. This one is also pronounced desert. Adjective from the 13th century. One. So the last one was a noun. This is an adjective. One. Desolate and sparsely occupied or unoccupied. As in a desert island. And some people will say a deserted island. You could also say a desert island because it's describing the island in the fact that it is desolate and there's not a lot of people or no people at all, no living things. Two, of or relating to a desert. Three, is archaic. The synonym is forsaken. I don't think I've ever really spent any time in a desert i'm trying to think i mean i've definitely walked through areas that are more dry like yeah but you know i've never been to the sahara or anything like that that would be interesting i don't know if i could spend much time there i mean technically you probably shouldn't but uh but yeah it's like okay cool sand dunes seen it i could spend an hour doing that and then i might get a little bored The next word is the very last one for this episode. Yes, it is. Third form, and this one is pronounced dessert. Dessert. This one is a noun. The verb form is going to be in the next episode. So this noun, pronounced dessert, is from the 13th century. Number one, the quality or fact of deserving reward or punishment. This one is very different. The quality or fact of deserving reward or punishment. One or the other could be either. We don't know. Dessert? I'm trying to think if I've ever heard this. Number two, deserved reward or punishment. Or maybe it's deserved reward or punishment. And this is usually used in plural. Ah, yes, I have heard this. Because the example is got their just desserts did 
my, did I think that this was the the word spelled with two S's when you say got their just desserts, like the thing? But no, this is about what you deserve. What do you deserve? Do you deserve a reward or you deserve a, a punishment? Once you get one of them, they are your just desserts. Hmm. <laughs> I hope the desserts that I get are well deserved. Number three. The synonyms are excellence and worth. This is from Anglo-French, the verb deservir. Deservir? And that means to deserve. So yeah, it's just what do you deserve in your life based on what you have done. We don't always get what we deserve, but sometimes we get what we deserve. Or maybe we always get what we deserve, and sometimes it doesn't feel like what we deserve. Just accept, just accept the desserts that you get. If you're getting dessert, you should just be happy with any dessert. All right, the words in this episode were descriptor, descry, descry, desdemona, desecrate, desecration, desegregate, desegregation, deselect, desensitize, desert, desert, dessert. Yeah, I am going to have to pick probably desegregation just because it's... I like living in a state of desegregation. I would be very angry if the the shops and things in my area were, were segregated. You know, there's a lot of towns that may be technically desegregated, but there are still often areas where... Certain people live in that area, and certain people live in that area, and um, it's just a very odd thing, and I think in, in certain ways it's hard to get past that, but uh, it's a very slow process, and I am very glad that a lot of people are working on it, and, uh, you know, I think we need more. A lot of people are just like, oh, it's fine, my life is fine, and I don't really think about it, but maybe more incorporation, more, uh, what's the word? more i don't know i can't think of the word just let's just throw all the people together in one place let's see what happens um yeah obviously desegregation was a good thing i'm very glad that that has happened and i cannot think of anything else intelligent to say about that not that anything else i said was intelligent in the first place i like desegregation i'm glad i live during a time where we are not segregated yeah, just makes me uh, a little depressed when I think about what people have had to go through. Oh, the horror stories are really, really messed up. And uh, yeah, also just how it's still probably happening in other places in the world. Can we stop this madness? Uh, th this is a time when I really wish I had somebody smarter than me uh, as a guest who can talk about this stuff more seriously because there's a whole history. I mean, we could talk about this thing for hours and hours and hours, but instead I'm going to probably give you some links in the show notes and you can go learn more about it. That is going to be the end of this episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. You know, if you if you really want to see some pictures of things that I talk about here, sometimes I will post them on social media at DictionaryPod on Instagram and Twitter. And I don't know about this Twitter thing. There's uh, there's some news in the Twitter world recently, probably a couple of weeks ago for you, if you're listening to this when it airs. But uh, yeah, Twitter's going to change, it looks like. And uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean... From what I've heard, I don't feel very happy about that, but uh, it'll be really interesting to see how this evolves over the next days, weeks, months, year. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of people who might leave Twitter, and uh, I'll have to think about what I want to do about that. But right now, it doesn't sound great. That's just my opinion. Um, okay, what else? Uh, at Speed Jampar, you can also go look at that, that on social media. 
And you can rate and review this show on all the places, Apple Podcasts, subscribe it, download those episodes on all the platforms, and uh, listen to this, binge it, tell your friends, share, subscribe, do all those things. You can email me, dictionarypod at gmail.com, Google voice number 917-727-5757, buy some merchandise, join the Patreon, do all those things. If that was too much information for you, just look in the show notes. You don't have to memorize all that stuff. I write it out for you to make your life easy. The first word in this episode is dessert. Again, same as the end of the last episode. D-E-S-E-R-T. It's unfortunately not the desserts, the sweets, the sugary things that you put in your mouth. Not those. This is the fourth form of this word pronounced either desert or dessert. This is the verb from 1603, starting with transitive one, to withdraw from or leave, usually without intent to return. Oh no, why? Why aren't you going to come back? As in, desert a town. We were done with this town. We got to we gotta leave and never return. Usually I also think of it like you're deserting and like leaving people behind. Number 2A, to leave in the lurch. Yeah, like this one, as in the example, desert a friend in trouble. Why? Why are you going to leave your friend in trouble? That's that's just a that's not you're you're not a friend anymore. It's you you can't be you can't you just that's mean. Don't do that. Leave leave in the lurch. To be, to abandon military service without leave. They didn't give you permission to leave. You just abandoned your people. Desert. There is one intransitive, which is to quit one's post, allegiance, or service without leave or justification, especially to abandon military duty without leave and without intent to return. Yeah, deserting, it's just like, go, 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 and never come back. That's that's the idea. Please don't desert this podcast, unless, unless you're going to leave desserts that I will accept. A synonym is the word abandon. Deserter is a noun. Uh, but, you know, I guess there might be context where I, I personally would think it's okay. Like, if you're not being treated well, maybe, then, uh, yes, that's a time, a good time to desert. Or maybe, maybe stay back and see if we can work out our issues. And say, why are you treating me not so good? Let's work on this. Then I'm not going to desert you. The next word. Oh. Ooh, the sound effect is going to be... Desertification desertification noun from 1974 it's not turning things into sweets it is the process of becoming desert i think that's the way you would pronounce that word in this context as from land mismanagement or climate change so something is turning into a desert an arid dry area that does not get a lot of rainfall and why because maybe the land was not managed well they didn't do the things or maybe they did things that they shouldn't have done or just climate change and we are seeing this all over the place there are, as we've said there are places that are getting more rainfall or less rainfall because the world is trying to get back into a good state of homeostasis and it has to has to mess things up to get back there we have messed it up so it has to say whoa i'm not going to put water over there because I can't right now. So things are becoming like a desert. Desertify is a transitive verb. The next word. Blah, 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 blah. Desertion. Noun from 1591. One. The act of deserting. Especially the abandonment without consent or legal justification of a person post or relationship, and the associated duties and obligations. As in, sued for divorce on grounds 
of desertion. They just left. I think that's enough grounds for divorce. Number two, a state of being deserted or forsaken. Do not forsake me. Do not desert me. Stay. The next word. <laughs> Desert locust. Two words. Noun from 1944. A destructive migratory locust of southwestern Asia and parts of northern Africa. And the species name is Schistocerca gregaria. Schistocerca gregaria. And I do think we may have to post a picture of this type of locust. They look like uh, grasshoppers, right? I think they look very similar to grasshoppers. A lot of people call cicadas locusts, but they're different. Yeah, and these, they, they like to live in the desert areas for some reason. That's where their food is. The next word. <laughs> desert soil. Two words. Noun from circa 1938. Uh, you know, a lot of us probably don't think of soil being in a desert, but there are a lot of places that uh, because they're they're dry, so they have soil and rocks and things, but it's just a different kind of soil. It's desert soil, which is a soil that develops under sparse shrub vegetation in warm to cool arid climates with a light-colored surface soil, usually, usually underlain by calcareous material and a hard pan layer. It's got a light color. It's the air. The air is warm to cool, probably cool at night mostly. And um, it's underlain. Does that mean that underneath it is calcareous material and a hard pan layer? Not sure what those are. And uh, yeah, definitely definitely can picture just a, an arid desert with soil and rocks and little lizards skirting around and maybe vultures or hawks or other things. And maybe locusts. And maybe this. A desert tortoise. Two words. Noun from 1933. A large burrowing land tortoise of arid regions in the southwestern U.S. and adjacent Mexico. The species name is Gophorus agassizil. Wait, what? There's two eyes at the end. Agassizii. 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 No clue how to say that word. Uh, yeah, we got to post a picture of a desert tortoise also. There are so many different kinds of tortoises and turtles. Well, maybe not so many. I mean, yes, there are so many, but desert tortoise, I think of just those real big ones that walk slow and live for 3,000 years, maybe closer to one to 200 years. And uh, yeah, they just look very wise and old. Next word. <laughs> desert Varnish. Two words, noun from circa 1898. A dark coating, which is found on rocks after long exposure in desert regions and whose color is due to iron and manganese oxides. What is this? If a rock is in a desert region for a long time, it gets a dark coating. But what is the point of this coating? What where does this coating come from? Is it I don't I don't understand this. Um and the color is due to iron and manganese oxide. So it's probably maybe like a like a dark red orange kind of thing. And uh yeah, maybe we'll have to post a picture of some rocks with a desert varnish. I mean, nobody's coming around painting these rocks with a varnish. They, they, maybe they just look like they have a varnish put on them. Never heard about this. Didn't I didn't know that they get a coating. The next word. Deserve. 
verb from the 13th century, starting with transitive, which is to be worthy of. To be worthy of something. The synonym is merit, as in deserves another chance. If somebody deserted somebody, but they did come back, maybe they deserve another chance, but it depends on what they did. Why did they desert? Why didn't they come back for a while? Intransitive says, to be worthy, fit, or suitable for some reward or requital. Requital? As in, have become recognized as they deserve. Have become recognized as they deserve. So they deserve to be recognized. Who deserves to be recognized? That is a quote from T.S. Eliot. I don't know what T.S. was talking about. Who was T.S. talking about? Deserver is a noun. This is from the Latin deservere, which means to devote oneself to. Hmm, this is interesting. To devote oneself to. And then de plus servire, which means to serve. So to serve, and then you add the de, and you're devoting yourself to a thing which is still very similar to to serve. And, but how does that connect to deserving a thing, to get what you deserve, trying to devote oneself to? I guess if you devote yourself to a thing, then whatever you get from that, you deserve it because maybe, I don't know, that's an interesting, but uh, yeah, I hope you get what you deserve, your just desserts. The next word. <laughs> deserved. So it's the same word with a D, adjective from circa 1552, of relating to or being that which one deserves, as in a deserved reputation. When you do a podcast like this, you definitely have the reputation you deserve. Deservedly, 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 those are ad that's an adverb. Deservedness. Deservedness. That is a noun. I don't know, it's just a fun, silly sound to make with your mouth. Deserving. First form. Noun from the 14th century. Synonyms are desert and merit. Or no, this one would be yeah, desert. Or merit. As in reward the proud according to their deservings reward the proud according to their deservings that's a quote from charles kingsley so based on what oh, what who's the proud what are they doing they are they're very proud and they get their what they deserve their desserts and you reward them with what they deserve. That that's what they're that is their deserving. Okay. That's a very silly word, I think. The next word is the second form of deserving. This one I think it makes a little bit more sense for my brain. Because it, it's an adjective from 1549. Synonyms are meritorious and worthy. Especially meriting financial aid, as in scholarships for deserving students. They deserve the scholarships because they are worthy, they maybe got good grades, and also probably, and or, they don't have a lot of money, their parents maybe don't have a lot of money to pay for school, so they say, well, you are worthy, you are deserving of going to this school and not having to pay as much as these other people who are not as deserving so we're going to give you some money so you can go to school for cheap or free. The next word, changing gears. This word is de-sex. And the emphasis is on the, the second syllable, de-sex. Transitive, yeah, transitive verb from 1911. Number one, the synonyms are castrate and spay. 
So that is, uh, castrate would be for like a male, like a dog, a cat, or something like that. Getting rid of their testicles and spay is, uh, I guess that would be for the female cat or dog or other animals. When you're getting rid of, I think, do they do a whole hysterectomy or do they just get rid of part of their, their sex organs? I don't know exactly. I don't know if it's just like the ovaries or the whole, the whole uter, uterus system. But yeah, uh, so that's, you know, they're undoing the, the sexual part of that animal. Uh, and so they, um, so, you know, if you don't, then they still got the hormones that are going through their body. And so, you know, monthly or regularly similar to humans, they, they have like a spike in hormones and that can make them go a little nutty. Um, so, you know, and then also then they can't, they can't reproduce. And sometimes if you got cats that go out on their own, if you got outdoor cats and they are not de-sexed or castrated or spayed or neutered would be another word, then they can get pregnant and then you get a whole bunch of cats or dogs, well, cats in this, in this case, that maybe you don't want. And I think there's already a lot. People can't take care of them. They end up in places that you don't want them to be and then a lot of them get killed, and we don't want that. So spay, neuter, castrate your animals. Two, to eliminate perceived sexism from. To eliminate perceived sexism from. So there is maybe sexism in a thing where it's perceived to be sexist, and then we're eliminating that. As in, desex the language of church Bible study programs. And that is a quote from H. M. Harley. So what is this saying? I'm not familiar with my Bible, but I guess it's saying that in the Bible there is some language that is, what, sexist? I'm shocked. I'm shocked to hear this. So in these church Bible study programs, did they, what, what did they do exactly? Did they remove this sexism from the Bible? Did they replace it with something else? Did they just ignore it altogether? Maybe they should discuss it in a logical, adult, mature way. Uh, what What else? I don't know. Um, interesting. De-sex. But then there's also the context of the opposite, where if it's not sexist language, but it's it's uh, it's sex sex language in a positive way. But then some people might want to de-sex that kind of thing. Hmm. I think having the word sexism in the definition limits this word. Okay, but then here's number three, and this is the one that might is maybe covering the other definition. It's the number two definition for the word desexualize, which is our next word. Uh, there is no etymology because I think it's fairly obvious. So here's the next word. Blah, 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 blah. Desexualize. How many ways can you pronounce this? Desexualize. 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 It's, it's the same word. Transitive verb from 1894. One. To deprive of sexual characters or power. Characters, do you mean characteristics? Is that... Can we interchange those to deprive of sexual characters or power? If somebody has sexual power, why are you going to get rid of that? Two, to divest of sexual quality. And these are very vague definitions, which I guess is good. Uh, but yeah, to divest of sexual quality. Desexualization is a noun. And... Um, I mean, what we can we can think of uh, what when you when people are wearing certain clothes that some people might think are oh too sexy, then it, you want to desexualize them and say tell them to wear different clothes or something, and uh, that's a thing that people do. People just got to be themselves if they want to do a thing, wear a thing, whatever. This they can do that. The next word. Blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't know how to say this word. Deshabille? Is that how you say it? Deshabille? 
There's no pronunciation because it is a variation of dishabil. It so this word is spelled D E S H A B I L L E, and the synonym. It's a variation of this other word, and the only difference is the e at the beginning is an i. Dishabil or deshabil, and I just don't know how to pronounce it. Maybe I'm close, but I could also see it being completely different to that. We're going to have to wait until how long? So many pages until we get to that one. Why do I care? Why do you care when this word is coming up? I just want to give you, I want to help you. Maybe if you're listening to this way in the future, you can just jump right to this episode. Uh, which which uh, aired, when is, um, here's the word. It, it's airing on February 1st, 2023. That's you can go hear me talk about it then. Blah, 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 blah. The next word is desiccant. D-E-S-I-C-C-A-N-T. Noun from 1676. It's just a drying agent as calcium chloride. So calcium chloride is a drying agent which can be called a desiccant. Next word. Blah, 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 blah. Desiccate. D-E-S-I-C-C-A-T-E, verb from 1575, starting with transitive, one, to dry up, maybe by a drying agent, two, to preserve by drying, and you might be preserving a food. Synonym is dehydrate, desiccate, hmm. I don't know if I have heard of this used in drying context. I think of this as something else, unless that's spelled differently. Number three for desiccate. To drain of emotional or intellectual vitality. It's you're drying, you're taking away the vitality. Is that the word I said? Uh, their intellectual or emotional vitality, and they're being dr drained and dried of it. Intransitive says to become dried up. Desiccation is a noun. Desiccative is an adjective. And desiccator is a noun. This is from the Latin verb desiccare, which means to dry up. From de plus sicare, which means to dry. From sicus, which means dry. And there's more at the word sack. I guess a sack is dry, like a potato sack. There's nothing wet. It's just a dry sack. All right. Desiccate. Yeah, I don't really know what I'm thinking of now. <laughs> of the other word. Desiccate. 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 All right. The words that we had in this episode were dessert, desertification, desertion, Desert locust, desert soil, desert tortoise, desert varnish, deserve, deserved, deserving, deserving, desex, desexualize, deshabile, desiccant, and desiccate. Uh, let's see. I wonder if there's a connection between desiccate, desiccant, and desert. You know, maybe back in the day they came from let's let's look at the etymology real quick latin desiccatus but i don't think desert or desert they didn't have anything similar but there's got to be a connection because deserts are dry and desiccate is drying up so yeah there's got to be a somewhere down the line in the evolution there's a connection um okay what am i going to pick though i think think I'm going to pick deserve as the word of the episode because it's uh, it's just it's really great when you get what you deserve I think we all no I don't I don't know I don't know I don't know how to sing a song about deserve we I just it's all the songs are the same deserve get what you deserve give what you deserve this is the deserve song Deserve, 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 deserve. It's starting to sound really weird. Deserve. 
you know, it's all about, it, it can be good things or bad things. If you did some bad things, maybe you get what you deserve. If you do some good things, maybe you'll get what you deserve. I just want everybody to get what they deserve. Uh, that's going to be the end of this episode. Oh, it was a doozy. This has been Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye.